six o'clock. First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Does anybody have anything they want to add to the agenda or modify? I didn't know if we uh, should have something for Neil Fox, if anything happened with Neil. I think he was going to come to the next. So I, I talked, I got your email, uh, and I talked with him this morning, and he said that he's been talking with people from the state. He's not prepared to do anything yet, but he is on the agenda, or actually we will do a um, Board of Health meeting at 5.30, our next meeting. We'll have a pre-meeting at 5.30 for the Board of Health, okay. where he will be here with some information that he's, okay. whatever he's found out. Right. Um, so yeah, that's what we're at. Do we need to do anything for Jose in terms of that decision for his grant? He's going to be on. He's got an appointment for the next meeting. Oh, okay. yeah. Is that going to be in time? Because he saw me where he works, and he told me we had to do something, do something tonight for him to get his paperwork in. Uh, well, he's not here. Apparently, I'm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I'll accept the motion to accept the agenda as written. So move. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, public comment inquiry. This is the spot. If there's nothing on, if there's something on, not on the agenda that you'd like to bring up, this is the time to do it. I think everybody that's here does have an agenda spot. So you're. Oh, yes. Yep, you're right on here, Stacy. So. <coughs> We do have our uh, first appointment already here, so we'll get you in and out. We don't have to wait another 15 minutes. Um, so, um, Stacy, you want to talk about his property? Um, On 286 on Main Street. So, see if we can evade the sewer and water tax, since it's not being rented or lived in anymore. So, um, so I guess we'll, we'll have to clarify what, what you're looking for. Um, like, um, when it comes to water, water and sewer, that can be done here, because we act as the water and sewer board. But when it comes to taxes, that would have to be done Just through, water, through, through a different- Just the water sewer tax. I mean, yeah, not, not, not taxes. Right. They have an abatement appointment. So, um, so also, so with your, so right now you, your water is not hooked up, correct? <laughs> so it got shut off after the incident. So it was shut off the day of. Yeah. So I, I believe what's happening right now, just talking with Therese and Greg today, is um, from the date that it was shut off from the event, you, you won't receive any bill for that. Um, I can't remember what the exact date was, but it happened just inside the this next quarter. Okay. What day was it? Um, 24th. 24th. September 24th. September 24th. <clears throat> so you won't be billed for the whole quarter as right now. What you would see would be a... Well, what, what needs to happen is that the ordinance actually allows for a, uh, an interruption or termination of service. So the water commissioners can do that. In an emergency situation, they don't have to tell you that they're doing it or anything. You just have to do it. So. That's really what we need to do, most likely what we really, because are you going to build another home there anytime soon? I don't so. You don't have any plans for it at all. So we're, basically we will terminate the water service to that, that property. Okay. And there will be no more billing at all. And it'll be from the date that they established, which is most likely that September 24th. So it's not necessarily going to be an abatement. I think it's more just a, uh, um, a termination of the service. Okay. And, that, and as water commissioners, you can, you can do that. So does that sound, that sound like what you're looking for, Stacey? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I guess at this point, what we'd be doing, um, if someone wants to make a motion, would be to um, to terminate the, the water and sewer um, services um, for the property at 2, 286. 286 South Main Street um, from the date uh, in which the emergency happened into the foreseeable future. I'll make that motion. Okay. Second. Second. Are you all there? Oh. Aye. 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 So what you'll see on your, your final bill will be a prorated amount that uh, Teresa put together just up to that 24th date. 
And then from then on out, you're, there's no more billing. Yeah. Except for what you owe. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. No future billing. Okay. I got to mention, say if I wanted to uh, turn it back on, fill the house, would I be able to? So if that's what you want to do, we need to actually do an interruption of service. Uh, which is just more of a temporary kind of thing. You can. Um, it just basically the, the code says that you, when you decide to turn it back on, it's like twenty five dollars to reconnect to the to the line. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So if that's what you really want to do, and you maybe need to reword that as to amend that to say an interruption of service, not necessarily a termination of service. Just a I'm just not logistically. Sure. Okay. So maybe that's what we. Either way, I think it's, it, we can make it happen. Yeah. Just if we, if we do it this way, and then if something changes down the road, you know, then we can revisit yeah, the code it. Allows can revisit it. The change. code allows for a reestablishment of the line yeah. or of the, the, of the service. service. Just okay. cost you $25. Yeah. So. so you're good. Thank you. We all set? Thank you. Well, regardless if it's interrupted or terminated at this point, the, the, the system has been shut off. It's not like we're going to take anything up or remove this curb stop or anything right. like that. So. Yeah, and it says if, it, if the emergency, because we're kind of running under the code section that talks about emergencies, which is what this was. It says if, it's, if it requires a shutoff due to the emergency, it's a responsibility of the customer to pay a $25 reconnection fee. So, so he would just come back to us and say, I'd like to. Yeah, exactly. Or turn the property or whatever. Yeah, and somebody else decides. Right. Yeah. I think the main thing right now is he just doesn't want to be built. He doesn't want to be built. So he essentially it will be stopping build from that date on. Yeah. Everybody else have that? Yep. We'll move on. So we we all uh, <laughs> we all got the long uh, drawn out email chain there this past week and a half with the E911 numbering system. You want to kind of take us up to speed of what we're well, looking at now? Or? And then E911 was set up in Bethel. It was done by a board or something. We had nothing to do with it. I don't know who set it up, but all in all, they did a pretty good job. Um, our first familiar with how it works. It starts at an intersection. And as it feeds out of the intersection, it's even on the right, odds on the left. However far you walk from that intersection is what your house is. Um, it all came into play because a while back, South Royal was going up to North Road, go from Bethel to Royalton to the property. And Royalton and Rescue had a call and they couldn't find the house. So, you know, they had some complaints about how to fix this. And I kind of heard the grapevine through the town and got CC'd on emails that they wanted to renumber all of the North Road with the second from Multiple reasons. Number one, they say South and North set precedence. Number two, Byron has like 60, Royalton has 50, and Bethel had 16, I think, that had to change. Well, then the backlash came of even though 16. Now you've got to change your 911 address. You don't think much about it until you start changing your license, all your billing, all the tax bills, and everybody started complaining. So Greg and I have talked three, four times about it, this or that, which way we go, and we are done correct for the way 911 states you have to do it. It's when they change tasks. And I had made the recommendation that if Royalton was going to change, they should really go sequential with Bethel. Because even though it's north to south, they go up the north road 99.99% of the time to go to a call in Royalton. They don't go all the way around 12 in that time. But they already had the gears to work, apparently signs are ordered, everything's done. Well then, you know, I get it. So they kind of fought back and forth and they sent out a second letter to the residents and then there was more of them. Well then I didn't think a whole lot about it until I got the last email, which I don't know if you all got with the yellow. And I like the, the, of how many roads now they're looking to change in fact. It's not one or two, there's 15, 20 roads, they want to redo everything. Mm -hmm. 
So when we, I didn't say any of that. Right. No, we didn't get that. Right. Right. Oh, okay. So, so when we say they, who, who's they? Is it the well, state? Well, technically, is it, uh, it's a little. One of them from the state of Vermont, Tyler. Hermanson. Yeah, Hermanson and maybe Annie from Costa. No, they, they're both. I thought one of them was going to be here tonight to explain because. By, you know, it's kind of conflicting. It's like in one of the emails, it says, well, you really don't have to do anything because you are right. But then in another email, he says, well, the state can do this and the state can do that. So I'm a little fuzzy on that. And, and that's what was really confusing. But th this is a, just a quick list of what he hired. Randolph Center Road to East Bethel Road should be changed. Arnold Road to Simpson Road should be changed. Fishville Road should be changed. Tyler William Road should be changed. Music Mountain Road, Gay Hill should be changed. Hillsville Road and Stockbridge and Bethel should be changed. Old Route 12 needs to be changed. The North Road needs to be changed. And that's not the ones that I like. Those are the highlighted ones. There's another, you know, they're going on back to Watch Hill, Tatro Hill, Camp Road, Rochester Mountain. Where do you stop? And what confuses it all is the mailing address. Because Bethel happens to be the hub of the mail. Everybody in Barner Rural Delivery says Bethel, Vermont. So, you know, they, they said that, like, let's say someone didn't know where they lived or was staying at the house and didn't know, and they had a call and they looked at their mail and said, well, 6 North Road, Bethel, Vermont, because that's the mailing address. Right. So they're going to call Bethel Fire. But that would be in Barner. Right. right. The <clears throat> fallacy of that is the fact that Bethel and Barner fire, share radio systems. We both, if I had to pick a number, it's mid 90% that listen to each other constantly. So we know. As long as I can remember, the only issue we ever had was years and years ago was actually a medical call for Wexford Valley on Sugar House Hill Road in Barnard, which is the old Sonberg ski area. And the lady was having a medical issue, and whoever was there, didn't know where they lived. So they picked up a piece of mail and said, well, 295 Sugar House Road, Bethel, Vermont. Well, before anybody even moved, state dispatch had it figured out, because we have Sugar Hill Road. So there was maybe 30 seconds of confusion. There has been confusion in other towns. Um, and it's, my feeling is right now, I was hoping someone from the state would be here, because I really think we're opening Pandora's box. And, and think, in your own mind, if I told everyone you right now, you've got to totally change your address, what that really means you have to change. You know, it's not just going out and getting a new red sign, it's everything. Because that's your mailing address. So, you know, everybody has input. It's not my call by any means. And when it started all this, I think you might have touched on it, was that there was a call that well, was it Royal they could be Royal they were trying to find this address. Well, the, the 911 placard, the little address, wasn't posted on the house. It wasn't posted on the property. So they weren't able to find it, mostly because it sounds as though they were right there. They were just within 50 feet of it, right? And they just didn't have a sign. The sign wasn't posted out so they could get to where they needed to go. And that really is the underlying issue. I yeah, think more than a number. I have done in the past, and we said we'll do it again this year, is it? My feeling is if any town's going to invest time, they need somebody to go street by street, house by house, and see who actually has their 911 sign up and is it in a location where emergency services can see it. And a good share of the time, the problem always is there's no sign. Now you can run it by the numbers, just like I said, that's the way we do it on a fire call. You know, we go up, we have a call on Camp Bell Road. It starts from Camp Brook, because that's the main road, not the Lilliesville Four Corners. So the numbers start up there. So if, if it's 1785 Camp Bell Road, we know it's 1.785 miles from the intersection down the road, it's gonna be on the left because it's an odd number. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can work your way there. And, and what happened is Barnard come from zero to 6,000, and then Royalton started at zero to like three or 4,000, and then Bethel goes from zero to 900 maybe so, the other way. So I don't see how us changing our 16 addresses is going to really affect that. This is my biased opinion. 
If it's not broke, don't fix it. But I also don't know what the state's going to do. That's why I was hoping they were going to be here tonight. Like, I thought you got the last email because we cc it through with, but yeah, maybe you didn't with them. the whole list that they want to change. And there's a couple like the end of Fish Hill. There's two houses in Bath that start over at zero again. Okay, those two maybe you could change. But what's interesting is in the fire world, if we got called to Fish Hill, my immediate reaction, anyone the fireman is told out Randolph and Randolph Center, mutual aid, instantly. Because they're gonna get there before us anyway. Um, I don't know why they did certain things certain way. If you go out, uh, is it White Oak Lane, which is actually in Royalton, right by the substation, going up 107 out of town. Royalton has all those sequential. And then Pat McKenna, who lives in Bethel, his is sequential with them. So it's, it's kind of a mixed match. And, and now with road changes, you know, like the, we call it Camp Brook, they call it Rochester Mountain. Who's going to change? They, they're doing the same thing with Route 14. So is Route 14 going to be consecutive where it comes in the state of Vermont all the way to the northern border? So you get up north, are you, you know, 107,481? That's, that's what I don't know. You know, how they're going to... Yeah, at this point, it's, there's nothing man. Um, in some earlier emails from the, the 8911, they said that we're not required to do anything at this point, but they just they're recommending that. So all the time and effort that Kelly put in and, and all of that stuff, how did that all come to pass? The, what, what triggered all that happening? Well, I wasn't for, in, in the initial, I didn't even know. I would think you would have and, been involved in any so of the I discussion. Didn't know. So, still, so we had the incident know? out there where, in a row, well, they couldn't find the address. And mm -hmm. she got an email from this guy from, from the state, from the E911. He's our, kind of our coordinator that we work with all the time to make sure we're numbering correctly and all that. Saying that there was this issue and we need to renumber. Um, Royalton is going to be renumbering, so we need to renumber to make it work. So we just kind of went with that and thought, okay, well, we're required to do this. Blah, 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 blah. Sent out letters and did all that work. And then we got an email from them that said, uh, well, I think Kelly actually send an email saying, hey, are, we, are we sure we have to do this? Are we required to do this? Because we were getting a little bit of pushback okay. at the beginning. Yeah, I can imagine. And uh, then we got an email that said, you're not required to do it by any means, but we just recommend that you do it because it makes it easier for, for first responders. Mm -hmm. And that's when we started really thinking about this is even worth it. Plus, at that time, we'd sent out that second letter saying this is going to happen. And we have 16, I think there's 16 addresses, and we have eight or nine people that, that call us. So more than half of the people up there were calling us complaining that it was significant issues that they had to work with here to, right. to get this fixed because of their address change. Mm -hmm. So that's when we started thinking, well, is this really worth doing this? And then you gave me this email yesterday, or I just saw it yesterday, with all the yellow on it, and it shows 14 roads in town that they're recommending that we renumber them all. Mm -hmm. So we're a little hesitant to pull the trigger on this because do we want to set that precedent and have to do this throughout town? It's not mandated. You know, if it ever becomes mandated, then we'll do it. But at this point, we're just a little, a little worried about setting that, that example and then talking with the chief. He doesn't have an issue with the way it's working now. We haven't had any issues with the way it's working now. No, and it, it's, it's, you know, like the fire call, for instance, that I was talking about. When someone calls 911, we're state dispatch, both Bethel Fire and Warrior Rally. They have 911 mapping on the computer system, and they knew, they saw that the call was coming from Byron. You know, even though it's a Bethel address, and they're saying, well, this person's saying Bethel. And then instantly everybody was on the radio saying it is Byron. You know, and, and Royalton uses Hartford Dispatch, which they do a great job too. And, you know, what it really, again, I think falls back to is everybody's got to be more proactive on putting your 911 signs out. Now, I live on Gilead Brook. That's a Randolph mailing address. I carry a P.O. box in Bethel, well that must make it even more confusing. As long as I've lived on Gilead, I've never seen anybody from Randolph call Randolph Fire for a call up there. Um, where does it end? Pleasant Street in Bethel. Goes all the way to the town line. They have a Randolph mailing address from Gilead North, but there's also a Pleasant Street in Randolph. So, you know, it's just... I think until the state actually says, okay, what are we going to do? Mm. You know, I, I don't, I'm hesitant to change anything. It's it not broke. It ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. 
And I like I said, I really was hoping that the state was going to have a representative here tonight to maybe shed some light in different directions. I think I think the way that I see it really is you know two pronged. If 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 we're comfortable with the way our system is currently, um, and we feel like no no single person is going to be left out on a, an emergency call, and we're not being mandated by the state to do it, then we should you know no sense of fixing something that's not broken. Mm -hmm. It just seemed like to me when when this was presented to us a month or two ago that it was kind of like something we had to do. Like, you know, so it was kind of more like, you know, we have to do this and it kind of went by the board. So then I was a little taken back when I started seeing all the emails because I was thinking, well, we all knew there would be some people that would be unhappy, but this was something that had to be done. So they're just going to have to live with it. But, um, and that was the impression we had originally. Was right, and then when I went in and saw, I didn't know about it until later in the game. I didn't even know that it had come forward or anything until I started getting feedback from residents, like it was my, I created a problem or something. And so that's when I went in and saw Kelly, I said, what's this all about? So she wrote a letter, her and I sat there, and she wrote an email right back to Tyler, and he wrote back pretty quick and said, well, you don't have to do anything. So we have North Road, and then we have the other roads that there's, 13 more. there's more that they're recommending to do. At this point, you know, the, well, like they, they, what they kept giving for a, a, a reason was they kept saying it was the fire department. The fire department. They said, well, what are you going to do if someone from Byron who lives on 6th North Road in Byron calls the fire department and they tell them out about it because they're reading their mail and it's saying about it. Well, you get into the what ifs. The, the beauty part is Bethel and Byron are on the same one. Um, you know, there's fire in every way. I think if someone saw there was a fire going to their station. But the, the moral is too is 911 dispatch immediately gets the, um, the you know, comes up with their map. They know the fire's environment. So, you know, it's never been an issue for us. It never has. And Martin's not changing it. Right, Byron, Byron is, you know, and the way they say it works is south to north. So, um, when, if they're going to read the team you're going to tell Rochester that they have to wait to call there. You know, we're, that's my biggest hesitation, is there's no precedent set. And it, it seems to be, the fire departments never have an issue with so much as the med. And in the medical world, there's so few locals anymore working. You know, it's all health and it's hired. But they do a pretty decent job. So I stopped and saw Matt Harris today, who's the runs White River Valley. And he said he's totally fine with the way it is. They, mm -hmm. You know, they've had their mishaps before. Um, they got called mutual aid to Royalton up on North Road to Russo. And that's a confusing one because Russo Road actually crosses the North Road, which is kind of unprecedented. Usually when it crosses another road, they change the name. So what Royalton did was, if you look at the signs up there now, they actually put the 911 sequence numbers one way and the other, so you get a feeling which way you're going. Mm -hmm. But I still say it's right back to signage is the number one thing. Yep. It's, you know. Well, I mean, I guess my two cents on the matter would be, um, would be one, you know, it sounds like your department feels very comfortable with the system that's in place currently. Um, and, and I, it's solely because we're such mutual aid. Mm -hmm. But we're also mutual aid with Royalton. You know, when they have a fire call on the North Road at Royalton, they tone us instantly because they know we'll get there before they do. I would so. just I would just make the recommendation that, you know, right now the the roads that we have in question, um, that we make sure that we understand each one of those roads and maybe talk with your counterparts on Making sure that we have those gray areas covered, um, if if something did happen, um, for now. Um, I mean, I think that. Which I, uh, we have done. You know, it's interesting. Like, uh, you know where Alvin Road is in Bethel? It's right on top of Macintosh Hill. You go over the other side, and it's a. I think there's two houses out there, maybe three now. That so they change. They have to put a name on it. Once you have three houses, you have to have a name for the street. Well, that connects through to Braintree. 
via a class four road that's totally impassable. And that is one of the roads that came up. You know, how do you sequentially do that? You know, because Alvin Road and Braintree doesn't pick up for probably another eight miles because there's nothing in between. Is there also something that we can do at the town level, maybe? People can order their 911 signs for five bucks. Kelly orders. Well, I was just thinking if maybe there was something we could do on, you know, maybe for now, just just on those roads in question, on some sort of mailer, you know, making sure that they have, it, rather than having a representation from the town go around all these roads and look to see if they have their address correct out there. Maybe if we had some sort of mailer, we could send out to them. Oh, I, I, was, I suggest to say if you haven't, let's make sure that you have those. Yes. Yeah, that's, he did. Because the reality okay. is, you are responsible for your 911 sign. Right. If you don't have your 911 sign up, mm -hmm. and you have a medical call or a fire call, right? You know, everybody does the best they can. Mm -hmm. So we've been pretty proactive of that over the years, and it's still a toughie. Right. But you know, I was going to say, if anybody, if any town's going to invest a little bit of time, it should be in design, it's not in redoing three quarters of the roads. So at this point, we're going to leave things the way it is, unless we hear. Otherwise, from the state, Greg? Let's say mandate it at this point, yeah. Okay. They won't and when, if, they, if they mandate it, the entire state sure. is going to have to go through this. It's not just that. Yeah. It's every single town that has a connecting road with different names is all of a sudden going to be under scrutiny. And it's a little frustrating because we've, the, the way we've numbered the roads are they follow the, recommend, the recommendation that the state came back with. And we did that. So now they're saying it's wrong, we gotta remember it. And it's interesting, like I was telling you about um, Fish Hill, which starts over at zero again at the fire when you go into that. Mm -hmm. Yet some of the other roads, like Spooner Hill Road, I don't know if you know where that is, mm -hmm. when you come to the end of Spooner Hill Road, that's back to Bethel again, but they made those numbers sequential. Mm -hmm. I don't know who did it back then or why. Right. Well, they, what, 911 system came through in what, the early 90s or? That one up came, mm -hmm. I think, yeah. early '90s when they changed all those addresses. <coughs> okay, I mean, I would just, I would just say at this point, let's just make sure that we have, you know, we've touched base with our counterparts of the other towns to make sure that we, you know, like for instance, if Royalton is moving forward with renumbering theirs, let's make sure that we <coughs> kind of know what they're doing, um, as well as the those roads that we have in question. Um, and, and, and the toughie is they're they're pulling in. The U.S. Postal Service into this, which had nothing to do with 911 to start with. Right. And now you're saying that the way rural mail delivery goes oh, is going to have precedence on how your 911 address goes. I, I don't yeah. see how you can make that work over this state as crazy as it is. Mm -hmm. Well, if we could do something in the town report or some kind of a reminder flyer, I assume everybody has Pass gotten on. has gotten a 911 sign at some point. And there's so a, any new new housing that's been built, they yeah, and we can also reiterate the listers as what they do to check and make sure that that, that, that has been put up. Um, we already have a page designator assigned in the town report draft that we're working on for this. Okay. Or half page, I don't know how big it is, but it's in there. Yep. Sounds good. Any further discussion from the board? No. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks, you were here for Status quo. I was interested because I was interested in the relationship between 911 and the postal mailing. Why did the officer become one instead of before? Was that right? And then that's what's crazy about it. Technically, with the U.S. Postal Service rural delivery. For our numbers, there's a duplicate environment. Mm -hmm. But you know, but it's the postal service. It's not us. It's not 911. All the 911 addresses are done correctly with the way 911 was set up for your town. So. The 911 signs. The red with the white letters, yeah. So I think at this point, it's just taking the page in the um, town report and maybe maybe even. Doubling that up with a mailer or something, so everybody has a. Yeah, 
would that be the same in the town, town report? It, it's just to kind of reiterate the, the need for everybody to have their V911 signs posted. Mm -hmm. So that whenever, yeah, so that when, when the first responders have to get there, they can they can find a place. Just a reminder for the, yeah, for the property owners on their responsibility to have their number located. And it'll say that they're available in the town, so you can get them through us and, and just make sure they're posted. That's kind of what it's about. Awesome. Yeah. But we're going to, it sounds as though we're going to keep the, keep the number in the way it is now. It's Okay. Right. Right. All right. Well, have a good evening. <laughs> All right. Have a good night. We are starting our first discussion um, for the <laughs> up and coming budget season. And uh, as usual, we usually kick it off with the government. So, <laughs> so you want to take us through it, Therese? Well, I can just tell you. Or, so this reflects a couple of things. One is um, increasing the repairs and parts line. You know, I, I guess I just want to start with a general applies statement about it. So first of all, the audit that we're going through right now. Uh, the town of Bethel lost money last year. Um, the expenses that could be controlled were controlled. Um, you know, but what happens is when you have personnel that's been here for a while and you buy a Burnham retired, Pam came in, um, they overlapped for a little while. Um, I came in, I'm not sure if my salary and or health insurance was, but it doesn't really look like it. Um, so, so, but the expenses that we control were controlled, but there was that, you know, piece right there where you have some of that. So it's certainly something that um, we take into consideration for, for budgeting now is if you have someone who may or may not be retiring, you're going to budget for that lead time. That way, if you don't use it, it stays there and you'll go to your undesignated fund balance, hopefully creating a surplus. So that's a good thing. And, um, but there's always talk in every town uh, about level funding. Obviously, I've said repeatedly I'm, I'm against that. There's certain things we can't cut anymore. You know, you, you, your electricity, you know, phone, things like that that are very difficult to control. There's not a huge part of the budget that you really can control. Um, and, and Dave certainly knows that from, from schools. So what we also need to remember is we're budgeting 18 months out. So I don't know about you, but my crystal ball is a little bit, you know, rocky and you know, a little bit cloudy. So what you want to keep in mind is the fact that if the wheels come off the bus at some point that you have a little bit of money, just because it's in there doesn't mean it's going to be spent. Just like we budget for salary increase. doesn't mean someone's going to get it. just means we budget for it. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is I want you to really think about that when you're moving forward, you know, through the budgeting process, obviously we're not going to bring another 10% increase to the voters last, you know, like we did last year, but that was, we had to clean up that loan. You had some issues that we had to take care of. The other thing is, I'm not sure, um, certainly people, there are people who feel that the budgets maybe in the past weren't managed properly. Well, it's also because they weren't budgeted enough money. And I do think that it's going to take another year or so before we really know what it's going to take to, to get the services that the voters want, um, whether it's roads, whether it's whatever. The other thing is, too, everything that was left is in disrepair or it's broken or it's, you know, your water system is, is almost is more than half appreciated and, and this obviously needs a lot of work. Highway equipment is the same way. So it's not like they were over, the budgets were overspent and we were left in this really great situation. We're not. So, you know, I, I just I want to be very bluntly clear about this moving forward that we will, you know, we need to present a realistic budget to the voters because I think by trying to level fund, we've kicked every can down the road and then, you know, that's where we're at. So, um, Obviously, we're you know really looking at that when we do budgets, and then you can certainly cut in the end. It's your budget to bring to the voters, but 
I just kind of wanted to say, this is where we're at. You know, we didn't find any like great pots of money or anything like that. So that's one of the reasons that we increased the repairs, parts, and tires lines from 41,000 last year to 50. Hold, trying to hold equipment longer. Plus, it's you know, poor Alan is, you know, had a lot of repairs, and Greg can certainly speak to that. Um, the other thing included in this budget is, um, uh, we you know renting of a roadside mower, which is something that we, you know, we've been able to borrow sometimes from other towns, but that's kind of tricky. Um, Alan needed some more basic tools, so we increased that line. Um, the debt financing is down a little bit from last year, like I said it was going to be, because we had that um, free. So the budget we have, we're looking at, this is a 5.14%, but the other discussion you're going to have to have here, and I think this is Chris's and Greg are going to talk about this, is well, we still budgeted for that 110000 for highway rehabilitation, but I really think that that needs to come out of here, and it needs to be, you need to do a two-part vote at town meeting and start a capital roads budget and then put this 110 in there, because if you don't spend this 110000 by June, um, it goes into the undesignated fund balance. So, you know, it's nice to have capital funds so that you can, you know, expense that money in and out or grants or whatever. So, um, <clears throat> no, and I'm not sure you would in open session. I wasn't sure. So. Well, I don't know. Yeah, so I don't know. Yeah. And, yeah, right, exactly. So, um, then you can read the notes. I think you've got the notes um, on the side. But certainly, uh, Greg is more equipped in dealing with the So, a question for you, Therese. The, um, the 780 hours for Doug. The we, first we should talk about that in the session. Well, we're discussing the budget, aren't we? So yeah, just, well, just the, the lead time in general. I'm not asking about his personal stuff. I'm just no, I'm just saying about that the, it's the same if, if you thought you had an, someone who may. You know, in any department, if you had anybody who you thought may um, retire or more. Right, right. If, I could, if I could finish, I think I'd asked at some point in time about that a long time ago, about yep. when we had those big, right, you know, we had several big, yeah. that, that, and, and that I, happened all at once, and, and the theory was that the money was actually there somewhere. Right. Um, that was my thought. In theory, it was, it was taken out on a regular basis as time progressed. Yeah. Well, all right, that's what I'm asking. That was an expense that we had not, well, that wasn't a budget before. Well, my question, I thought it was because I thought it was booked into the accrued, you know, because we accrue what we, it's a right. full insurance. Right, right. But I guess I mean. it was on paper only. It wasn't actually the cash, was, so but that was It was fine. never really there. Yeah. Right. Okay. So oh, that's what I was asking. Yeah, exactly. So that's why they're suggesting that we, that we budget for that. And, of course, you're, you're never going to hit it. It's right, but in hopes that we can. Yeah, yeah. The other thing that once someday when Bethel has an undesignated fund balance, I know when Fred Duplessis of Sullivan and Powers was here last year, he did recommend that we, um, you know, maybe set aside some of that for that reason, which would be nice, and then you wouldn't be showing those sorts of things in the budget. Mm -hmm. So I have a divergent question, but I don't want to leave this. No, no, I'm all set. No, I just, I, I wasn't concerned about no, it no, being no. dug, right, but right, you and I, I was just I concerned know. about the, con the concept. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so your recommendation about the 110000 for the highway rehabilitation and sort of breaking that out and putting it into more of a capital fund, mm -hmm. um, so two-part question. One is, would that be specific to public works? Would yes. it be capital capital fund for public works, and would that then cover things like when Greg comes to us saying, "Okay, we need new winter tires or no, the no. snowblowers"? So that's not for. So the original language for that line I think is to we have a capital plan for fixing the roads, paved roads. Mm -hmm. We have a capital. We have a paved road plan. We don't necessarily have a capital plan at this point, but we have a capital. We have a paved road plan that was done through the study that we had done, and. When they approve that fund, that was to fund those improvements on a yearly basis, not to um, collect those dollars and then do those improvements as, as we had the funds available. Mm -hmm. It was to do each one kind of one at a time. Um, 
So what, what we're proposing is that we take that out and it becomes a, a capital fund, which can then any unused, of the, anything that's unspent gets carried over to the next year. So we can then do a capital plan, a long range capital plan, that'll tell us how we need to save or where we need to spend to make certain things happen. Gotcha. That never happened. Yeah. Um, it was just put in as a line item instead of a, an actual fund that we can carry over. Yeah, we. And then it could be some judgment. The, the, yeah, sure. We could just do it in a lane if we really yeah. want. So it, it, would still, it would still be for the same purpose. Right. In a sense, it's just yes. held differently. The you actual. We already have a highway mm -hmm. equipment fund. Okay. And, and right. basically, you really don't want to take anything out of the capital fund that's less than five grants and can't appreciate it. But yeah. so you right. do have a capital equipment fund. That's the perfect solution. You have equipment and you have roads and you know, fire has one. And that's kind of the nice way to do it because. Then that money is always there because, say, you can't, no offense to Chris, but say pipe straight out, and you know, you can't get them here by June, but they can come in October. You just said goodbye to a big chunk of change, and it just went into the. I well, mean, and, and the roadmap is already there, but the, the way in which we fund it is not correct. Because, right. for instance, Greg mm -hmm. and I, you know, if you look at the capital plan that we have, you know, we're supposed to, this past year, we're supposed to fund it at like 110,000, and then mm -hmm. next year, it's supposed to be at like 160,000. Well, we had thought about not doing, well, there was a few things that we got ahead on, so we decided to, instead of doing 110, the budgets that we're in now, that maybe we'd only do half of that and save. But what we found out is if we don't spend it inside that year, it doesn't carry right. over. Mm -hmm. So unless we actually have a fund, for it, it goes back into the undesignated fund and we can't use it. So where did the 110 come from? Where did that number come from? It was a recommendation in, in from, the, that, uh, from that long range plan. From the long the range study that was that. Yeah. Yes. It'll show so it. So this is for doing like Sand Hill, for example, I yep. think is one of the ones on that. Multiple roads. Yeah. yeah. The study yeah. covers all the major roads in town. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But to your point about taking like tires and stuff out, what we're trying to do is make sure that the operational budget incorporates all those expenses. So we're not asking you for two thousand dollars right now. Right. Okay, and that's, that's sort of where I was going. That's what we don't want to do. That's why we're trying to fund the rest of this yeah. budget correctly. It sounded like that was the direction it was going, but I was just trying to clarify how we were getting right. there. Right. Yeah, I think. I'm so not only do we have to take that, we need to move that into its own fund, but we need to also relook at it to see what that number is supposed to be. I, yeah, I think that entire capital plan that idea needs to be. It's not set in stone, and that's what's nice about it. It's a roadmap, but it could change. The study recommends a certain se sequence. Yep. I don't agree with the sequencing. I don't think you agree with the sequencing that they recommend it. We can all go through that. We can go through a capital plan and look at that study and go, well, maybe we, maybe we do this road and then skip a year and do this road and this road. Mm -hmm. And that shows us how our funding's gonna work out. And we're not losing that money at the end of the year if we don't spend it because Mike can't get here until you know August first. <laughs> the nice thing is too, then you have you get a paving grant, you have the match, it's set aside, and and I used one ten this time, Chris, because that was what was in town report budgeted for next year, so or the year where it's all It also over. works better with grants when we get grants. Oh yeah, because yeah. it's nice if you have a paving now grant. You don't and have boy, that. all of a sudden, you know, what was going to be a shim coat now could be, you know, maybe you reclaim, do some reclamation, and you're all of a sudden, you know, in it, or you can go further or whatever. Or a lot of times with your grants, when you get them, you mm -hmm. have almost two years to use them. Exactly. Well, but if you're only inside your budgeting season, you have to use it within mm -hmm. that time. And when you're exactly. writing a grant, they want to see that you have a capital plan. You've got right. a fund. You've got money there available for that. To, to but that, that, but that one ten is raised by taxes. It is. Absolutely, and it will so, be. It, it, stay in the budget because you will have to appropriate it out. But um, you don't have to be voted so on separately. It, so the one ten stays right. in the budget. It just is going to instead of being used as an expense, it's going to be appropriated out, just like you did. Mm -hmm. you know, highway. But it's again, every every. It's it, to to create it. Into well, the right. It'll be exactly. It'll be a one time vote at town meeting yes. to create the fund. Uh, and then the second part to fund it, and then in the future, um, so the people will just see the money in there and know that it's the, the appropriation front, yeah. to the highway Sorry, fund or whatever you call it. No, no. Fund or whatever you call it. Okay. So, yes. All right. Um, you know, there's nothing, not a whole lot in here that's a, any really large changes. I mean, if there's any questions, we can, I can definitely answer them for you. But, um, you know, we did raise the tools like Teresa talked about. Alan's come to me multiple times and said, we don't have. We don't have sockets. We don't have anything. You know, everything's broken and just, or non existent. So he went and needs some money just to go buy some basic tools for the, for the garage. 
And then the other, what was it, what was 50? I haven't known here, this is a 15% increase in price per ton for salt. Yeah. And last year was a big year. And so, you know, and some of this stuff, you, it's really just weather related, yeah. whether or not you're gonna. Yeah, we got, we got a better than state bid price on the salt this year, and it's still a 15% increase. And that's better than the state's bid. This is crazy. Oh, um, now Gray has to pay this lovely, which he loves, the state permit about the road. Yeah, it's a, so there's a stormwater permit now that we have to have every year, and it's basically a funding mechanism. You're not really quick, I hope. The funding mechanism by the state, basically. Um, but they're gonna, it, it's, a, it's a stormwater permit that we have to have, so there's no question of that. So that's an addition of like $1,300 um, to the budget under permits. The other thing we did this year was last year I'd only funded 70% of our HRA liability because I wasn't really sure how that was going to go in Bethel um, because the town of Bethel pays half of the deductible and it goes on a card and you use that first. But we're going to, people go through it, so we're going to fund 100% of the HRA liability this time just because I didn't know how Bethel had done it. I've done it in the past by only budgeting a portion of it, but it, it looks like that most people go through it. So um, we're gonna budget all of the HRA liability now. So there's also a change there in health insurance, which is the same thing that we did last year, was say, I know what to base the budget on for the first six months of health insurance, the next six months I'm gonna do a 10% increase, just cause we made out okay this year, but you never know. So that's kind of the way we, we're gonna do that same scenario because we know the number for six months but we don't know the number for the next six so and that's where we're going to do that mm -hmm. and in the roadside mower um, we borrowed a neighboring town's mower this year and there's probably not an issue with that at all they had no issue with us doing it but i want to just make sure that if they say no that we still have their bill delivery at that mower well, we we got to look into purchasing a mower yeah no, 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 that's again we need to look at our capital plan that's yeah. a, a whole other ball game so, so back to the, <laughs> the 110 again. I don't want to beat a dead horse. I just, I, I'm just curious. So if that 110, is the concept there, well, if we only utilize, we'll put that aside, and if we only utilize 60 of it, let's say, so that the other 50 is kind of building yes. a fund towards when the big kahuna hits and we need right. that money, mm -hmm. because that's, you know, every $19,000 is a penny on the... Well, no. It's true, but Actually, I mean, I, and I'm sure that's the intention. Driving, well, that's what I'm getting. I'm going to get asked. Test. I mean, that's the thing. You have 81 yeah. miles of road in Bethel, so mm -hmm. the fact that you always will have a road project going, you know, is I, I can't imagine the summer you don't. You're not mm -hmm. ditching or. Is that like the culvert lining up on um, Black Hill? It's paved road. It's paved it's paved road. Yeah. No, it's not all roads. No, it's paved roads. Oh, I oh. see. So, oh. oh, okay. I mean, I can look at the language, but I believe it was paved road. But you can make it whatever you want. Exactly. Yeah. So we, when we take this to the voters, we can well, make money for it. I'm just, the idea I'll is get just the highway. Like the highway, we don't take money out of that every year. Right. We may just buy, you know, put in whatever we put 100 into it, and we only take 30. And we have this long range plan that says, okay, you carry that over, and then you carry this over, and then you spend this a little bit. That carries over, and you just have this long term plan. That's the whole idea with this. We can't do that now because that one team goes away. So there is no, 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 yeah, no and, and being how critical our no. budgets have been here, you know, we want to try to get out of the peaks and valleys of budgeting up and down, you know, because mm -hmm. if you look at the funding mechanism for the capital projects, for paid projects, you know, if you follow it, it's, you know, 110 one year, then 160 the next year, right. then 120 and then 200, you know, it's like up and down. So if we can mm -hmm. find that mm -hmm. happy medium, that way we can consistently, then we can move that money over, which... Which we thought we could do until right. we found out this year we couldn't. It you know, I mean, Paul, it doesn't have to be set. You don't say it's 100,000 for the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. As we do our planning, we see that our need starts to, to lower whenever we can, yep. we can taper it down. Yep. Or up. Or up. Yeah, or up. It doesn't, it's, it's whatever. But it's, we have to really establish that plan and figure out how the funding works. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing you do with highway equipment. Exactly. And fire equipment, once you stop making your payments, then that money will go in there and hold. The hope of a capital fund is obviously that you're not borrowing money, is that you have enough by the time you trade in something, that you have enough saved that you can purchase it outright <coughs> so you're not, you know, increasing your debt load. So, not that I want to go through every line item, 
Knock However, yourself out. Too late. However, <laughs> um, I would just kind of like to go through this kind of in order. Mm. You know, we don't have to go through every line on them, but maybe just take it by each section and talk about a few of them. Um, on the public works personnel section, well, let me back up. So overall, this proposal versus last year is, is $55,000 higher um, for the public works overall. So, you know, currently right now, I mean, we're looking at, um, you know, almost three cents on the tax rate five, just for that one, one department. Mm -hmm. they also, yeah. too, we, you know, we don't know, keep in mind is once you throw this in with the rest of the budget, how other budget right. look. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. obviously have this as an offset by any revenue yet because you will get state highway aid. So there's some things that, that will reduce that. And I, and I completely agree with Therese, you know, one of the major issues that we had in this town was the every year we budget for five thousand dollars however every year it runs over by ten thousand dollars and it was easy to bring to the taxpayers to get approval on but you know we ate it in the long end mm -hmm. run so i mean we definitely obviously have to have a realistic budget but i think we also at the same time need to look at our needs and wants a little bit too um I can tell you, Chris, the retirement portion went up. The state upped it. I think you were at 10.66, and now you're at 11.7. So the town's match for the retirement went up. That's just mm -hmm. recently. Actually, took that's state mandated. Uh, Excuse me. You said that's a state mandate. Yeah, the state because we're part of the state retirement system. They mm -hmm. they have they just tell you what's going to be. I they mean, that unfortunately, the you know under the public works personnel section. It, there's really not much that we can do with that. Other, you know, I'm, majority, well, some of that is, is the buyout of retiring, you know, mm -hmm. type people, um, and then the increases in healthcare, which we have to deal with every year. Um, however, if you kind of, if we look through some of these, a couple that kind of caught my eye first was, um, obviously I had the repairs, parts, and tires that went from 41,000 to 50,000 in this proposed budget, you know, and, and then just kind of looking through the three year history, it's about a $47,000 average. Yeah, because in 16, um, 17, yeah, you were at 53, and there's 46, and there's still. So I know. just kind of, my notes, anyways, was just kind of, I had written, you know, maybe we could bring that down to 45,000. Um, the, um, we have the garage building supplies line. Um, which it seems like every single year we have missed that one. Um, so I guess the first question is, what is the real number there? And because, like, you know, are we really, do we really have our finger on what that line item represents? Or is it just, are we just throwing bad money into well, we went the public works building? Detail. You know, Alan. You know, we have all the detail, the budget, and we talk about it. And for him, you know, it's it's because every be, year that one's it can uh, be supplies. Like he was telling Greg and I, it can be small tools. It's paper towels. Yeah. It's toilet paper. It's a little also, bit of everything. It's, right. Yeah, it is. Kind it's also nuts and bolts, to... and you know, if you need, um, you know, whatever it's fire extinguishers. Obviously, those there's code for that, and so it, it is kind of a. But it just looked like it's, you know, all it looked like that was one that was always kind of out of control, maybe because nobody was really looking at it. But you know, almost every year, except for one, it was off by. It was just underfunded. It, it, it was it was off by 25, 30 percent every year, and then one yeah. year it was off by 100 percent. Yeah. And then, however, if you kind of I don't know how you know how accurate the actual is for this year. That's here, yeah. but it looks like it's being managed pretty well. From what yeah, I well, see. Alan is you very know, we good. We budgeted eighty five hundred, and it's at twenty five and change. So mm -hmm. it seems like maybe because we have the finger on the bolts now, maybe it's mm -hmm. being managed better. Um, so my thought on that was, if, you know, our current budget season's eighty five hundred. Looks like it's being managed pretty well. Do we really need to bring it up to twelve three? I mean, just remember mm -hmm. every every thousand dollars here and thousand dollars there, we find. Yep, you know, that you find 18 of them, it adds up to a penny, so. Um, uh, the other one I looked at was, that seemed to be one that's always been severely under budget, 
which then I have a question mark, is the uniforms. So every single year, uniforms is almost almost doubled. Well, Greg can explain well, that. So I don't, is, well, no, it's one, gone down $5,000 over the last year. It was, you must no, Well, I'm just saying in the past, it's, it's always been doubled. Well, that's because it was, I don't know why, because you had a universe that was doing your uniforms and yeah. ripping you off. It's, so it's, we're, they're we're gone. <laughs> they're gone, and we now buy our own uniforms. So we're good, there. Lot, And that's why we cut it from 10000 to 5000 Okay. So I was just curious if the 5000 in that case was, was it accurate enough to yeah. take care of it. So, that, so many trends showed that we were. Yeah. So that, each, that allows, each employee gets a stipend. That allows a lot of each employee, plus it leaves uh, a little bit left over for things that they should be buying, you know, maybe reindeer or things like that that should maybe the, order the, the town should be buying for. So okay. the reason why it was turning the other direction is because you had Unifirst and they were under, we were under a contractual agreement with them mm -hmm. uh, for a lot of years, like 30 years actually. And uh, there was a buyout at the end of last year, which is why this is a little high. But and now we're at 5,000. That's a, that's a steady number. And that won't be overspent. Mm -hmm. uh, it actually should be underspent because the allotment of each guy's getting it comes up to roughly half, I think, of that $5,000. And it's plenty for them to get boots and pants and shirts and all that. Okay. Is there and a reason that diesel is budgeted so high, but is it just to They get two that? shipments a year, so it's really just a matter of time. You're looking at just one, they only make one shipment. Right. They typically only get, I think it's two, right? Yeah. And they get one. Yeah, also to the fire and the constable pull out of there too, so it depends how many call fire gates, and then what happens is I build a constable's budget and I build a fire department, yeah. so then you put that money So in. some of that is offset. Fine. Yeah. Constable doesn't use diesel of it. Well, he gets billed for just gas yeah. that they, oh, yeah. Yeah. Fuel yeah. That they yeah. have up there as I mean, well. It's, it is under, I mean, you, you're substantially under, you have 55,000, you know, 17, 18, it was a 34, 9. In 29 and 16, 17. Right. It's hard to know what diesel's going to do and what. You well, know, and it's gone up. It just buffered in in case prices. Right. Yeah, yeah. we dropped to 5000 last year, but yeah. right. you kind of think, see how things go. Yeah. And it looks like right now we, we're on track for about 42000 right. um, if you carry out what we've used versus the rest of the year. Yeah, I mean, that just might be one I'm that, sure. you know, do we, does that 50 become a 45, or, you know, I don't know. Yeah, but do we know if, the, if I put the price of diesel is going to be in the next, it could be. If I knew that, if I knew that, I would not be here. <laughs> well, if, 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 if we're buying it all from the same place, then we should be able to lock in at some point, shouldn't we? I mean, maybe I'm. I, it's usually, I don't know. I think we get a good deal from them. I mean, yeah. see the oil, we've dealt with them for years, and they just. We didn't bid out diesel. We bid out um, the heating fuel and stuff. Yeah. But but it's um, you I know it's all the same. Depends if you have a hard winter. You know how it's going right. to go. The other thing is too, it's never bad to leave a little bit just in case something mm -hmm. breaks and you're overspent on something and there's a little bit of cushion to save your bottom line. But hard to know. Yeah. That's the part about the 18 months out. Of, you know that's a bit of a game. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So on materials. Anybody have anything else? On any oh, yeah, I got a couple questions. But you were sure. busy. Go for it, Dave. <clears throat> the phone, thirty-six hundred and eighty-five dollars a year for the telephone. What else? What else is going on with that? So they have telephone. They have internet. There's a cell phone, um, and they also have um, pagers, right? Security cameras. Is there a pager? Too? Pagers, not. Is that there. part of the? No pagers. That's I a different thing. Let me see what it says. Do they have other communications? Well, they have one pager. Morgan has a pager. Yeah. Uh, communication system on their uh, what? One yeah. Seven or five. So yeah. So that's, so that's what the telephone is. It's their it's internet, telephone, cell phone, and um, I think they have a special connection, you know, because of their security system. Really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is just because I don't know, the 100% uh, of your HRA liability, why, why, why that 100%? Just because I, I budgeted 70% last year, because I wasn't sure, obviously wasn't, wasn't sure how it worked in Bethel since I was new, and uh, just seeing that people are using it. 
So instead of what I was funding was just 70% of it in hopes that not all employees were we're using all of their HRA because sometimes they don't. And so you have, you know, you can budget a little bit of the right. liability, but they are using it. So it, it just makes sense to have to cover 100% of it. I just really <clears throat> didn't have many people who weren't using it. Wow. So. Well, insurance is expensive. I understand. That was, I spent six months negotiating insurance. <laughs> That was my question. We only budgeted like twenty-five percent. Yeah, yeah was, I only budgeted seventy percent, and but but you know it's the what how it works here is that the deductible you use the card first. So we Bethel front loads our share. Then once the employee goes through that, then they have to go through their share. So because it's front loaded, most you know when people end up using it. So, mm. so we we did they pay first dollar. Oh, see, in here they pay town yeah. pays first dollar. Yeah. So that yeah, we, we had a special formula in there, but they had to pay first dollar. Yeah, no, that's the way it, it works here. So yeah, okay, I just I just wanted to understand. No, that. of course, that makes total sense. Anything else on first page? And I mean, granted, we can come back to this. You know, once we start well, seeing yeah, some of the other sections. Yeah. <coughs> it's good to identify yeah. some of those spots to look but, at. But, you know, these areas that we can... Well, I just wanted to mention that, I, you know, I've, I've used the word level funded around. And I understand the concepts, how the whole thing works, and it's never... My thought, though, is if, if, we, do, if we never set a target, of level funded or close as we can and just look at all these individual items realizing that every 19,000 is a penny then it, it, it'll never come to pass it'll yeah. and I've in the past I've heard well it's okay we can bump it up three percent we can bump it up five percent last year we've hit people pretty hard yeah. in both the sewer and water and um, the taxes so I think, it, and it's really impacting, we're hearing it all the time, how it's impacting the folks on Social Security and the elderly and, and all that. So I just think, when I use that term, I just, I think more of the concept um, of, let, you know, 3%, well, 3% is not good enough. Let's, can we get it to two and a half? Is there something we can do? And just keep that in mind through the whole process. I think it's, you know, I think we've you know, done that. I mean, not. Oh, I, I don't know what you've things are a thousand percent better than they were. We're trying to level fund with an understated budget. No, I understand. I understand. You guys are up. <laughs> you guys are doing. A, I. I mean, I see the bills every other week. You know, I mean, everybody is being held responsible for their I mean, we, expenditures, and everybody's pulling the pulling no, the rope. I, I think you're right. I think yeah. Obviously, it can't be carte blanche. I mean, I think you, no. you look at. You certainly look to. You know, my thinking is three to you know, five being on the outside. And and like I said, this is obviously, you know, we're not going back to the voters for another 10. And, and um, but it, it may take, it may take, as I've said, you know, a year or two to get, to figure out what your number is. And then it's really a lot easier to keep that, you know, 3% or less. Um, mm -hmm. So that you're kind of in that thing. And, and while I certainly feel bad for taxpayers, let's not forget that because they were level funded for a long time, it was, you know, there was you know, that, which is unfortunate. And I'm not saying that in a, in a mean way. It's also too bad because whoever got away with that good now, the new people are paying for it. You know? <laughs> so I know, but everybody drank the Kool-Aid, you know? Yeah, exactly. So, you're right, Paul. You're re rearranging the chairs on the Titanic. Yeah. yeah what, I, I think it'll help you once you see the budget in totality, you know, to, to see. But, you know, every line item needs to be looked at. I think a couple of budget seasons ago, we had established as a group at the time that if we wanted to go from the budget that wasn't very well put together to a absolute perfect budget where the town should be, you know, we had thrown, thrown together, like, there would have to be an instant over the night increase of like 12%. Oh, sure. Right? That was kind of what we were thinking. And I remember Carl and I talking and saying, you know, obviously, you know, we're not gonna go 12% in one year, so how can we pick over the period of X amount of years mm -hmm. to get to that? Yeah. And then once we are at that level, and then we can control it and keep our, you know, more of a level mm -hmm. funded budget. Yeah. So that's why, that, and I think that's where that 3% came up, is 
we, we are talking about, you know, how much do we think that the taxpayers could come up with mm -hmm. um, over a period of small adjustments. Granted, not only did we have, you know, our town budget, but we had water, we had sewer, and we had all this long-term debt and things like that that all came at the same time. So mm -hmm. they've been getting hit. Yep. And I think last year we were just under 3%. Uh, if, you take the, like, if you take the long-term debt, oh, you know, I think we were at 2.7 or 8%. Yeah. Or yeah, but but even, that, that, even that was kind of a <laughs> guesstimate because it was the first real, right. first real look at the, but even the information that you guys had a long time ago oh, yeah. probably was incomplete or well, we, you know, maybe. We would look at the old budgets and see that yeah. it was budgeted $5,000 and every year it went $12,000. And, you know, why, why budget 5000 again? <laughs> or, you know, or who's yeah. watching it, you know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and I think, yeah, yeah. Certainly and we had talked about that after this, you know, when we get to July 1st of next year, we're, at that point we should have a pretty good handle of what it costs us to run mm. the town. When we're looking for it. At least, so, so when we get into that, you know, 20, 21 budget, then it should be, we should be online with. You still have a couple of years of history. I know, good, but. A good history. So let's talk materials. That's great. So we have, um, so we'll talk, we'll pick on salt first. We can see he level funded. I mean, so we talked about that salt when there was a 15% increase in, from last year. However, the budget was reflecting a 47% increase in salt. Yeah, um, well, look at last year. Well, we used uh, yeah, I mean, we used a lot of salt last year, but I think there were some instances where we used salt that maybe we didn't really need to use salt. You know, there, there was that. Remember, we talked about last year at the board that there was that kind of a learning curve. learning curve year and um, 16, 17 was also over. So I just asked, you know, what, what, you know, if we did, if it was 15%, then you're probably talking more like $80,000 for that item, not 100000 which is one cent on the tax rate, you know. Mm -hmm. um, the other one, too, is sand. And we have sand level funded at 35000 However, we, we purchased more sand than normal. We did. Mm -hmm. Which we... I remember talking to, you know, that was a, a deal to take it. No, it, was, it was, we it, took it. it so, was here, it was yes. so at this point, wouldn't we have a balance of, well, uh, wouldn't we have a surplus of sand at that point if it's managed correctly? Depends on the winter. Uh, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, There's so many, I, yeah, you're right. That's the kind of thing you might want to have a little buffer on. <laughs> no, but we, in the budget we're in now, we, budget. we budgeted 35,000 for right. sand. And we had an opportunity, yeah. a deal to take more sand. And we did it. Right. So in theory, we have a surplus. Yeah, you're, for you're exactly right. In theory, you're right. We have a surplus. You know, could we take advantage of that surplus? Yes. So you know, you or not? Then we cut that surplus out and hope that we don't just, have a, a bad win. Just talking about yeah. it. So that I mean, I don't think we need to cut anything tonight. But well, I think no, it's, I it's, that, it's good to have this conversation so that once we get the whole budget together, and we say we're at six percent and we need to cut something. You know, we know this is but maybe it's something, Greg, that you can look into and see, you know. Well, I think what you're, could I think your theory is exactly correct. But again, what we're, we're talking about, and you guys know better than I do because you've right. lived here a long time, it's the variable here is, is the weather. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. oh, the no, state no. last year went crazy with their sand. They laid down more or more salt. Mm -hmm. Now, they were over budget by millions of dollars in salt last year. It yeah. was just a ridiculous year. Mm -hmm. right? If we run over budget on salt, we can always go to sand because we've got it. Right. Which is cheaper than salt. Right. But what we're, what we're trying to do is... I don't think we have a bare roads policy, do we? <laughs> we do not have a bare roads policy. But tell People me. forget that. We might put that in our town report, too. <laughs> um, you know, we want to budget it enough, but we also want to have, you know, not too much, of course, but it's a tough balancing answer to the well, it's, a, it's a lot of money. So I, I don't it know. It is a lot of money. Right. Well, the other thing, too, is, you know, Alan made a really good point. Um, Alan, your highway, your road foreman, was saying to Greg and I, the other thing is... You know, you don't have a salt shed really that you can store. So if he had a salt shed that was bigger, he could be able to buy in the off season and fill it and right. get some savings, which right. he can't. So that's certainly right. one of those right. things. Where now he can only take you know a truckload or two, where he has to have them keep coming. So yep. down the road, when you build that you know town fire and salt shed, mm -hmm. you know he's. Well, what's what's so, the shed that we have over there? What's small. in that shed? Oh, it'll probably hold ten yards. Mm -hmm. 
It's just the one up over on that thing. Yeah. Uh, he's actually going to empty his, uh, his asphalt. He's got asphalt, a small shed too. It's probably 10 yards, maybe the most. He's trying to dump that out. We dump that out so we can put more salt in there just to have it. But I mean, you know, what we can look at is maybe look at the look at the historic trends, um, quantify those, or get a number with that, and add fifteen percent and see what that comes up with. I, I don't know. I don't know if that's gonna if that's gonna get us because we're at sixty eight. Are we with hundred thousand and eighty six thousand and then forty eight thousand over three years? So that's two hundred thousand dollars, two hundred ten over three years. So, what is that? Seven. I can't do that. Seven. Sorry. Seven. Seven. Then add 15% to that. So that puts us, what, 80, 85? 81. There you go. So just, here. Yeah. just looking at those things, I mean, I, I, you know, you talked about the tools, um, that we need tools, obviously, but, you know, how, how can we best um, do that? I got to bring the wrenches from home and work on that. Yeah, he said they need screwdrivers. He said it'd be crazy. It's just crazy. He said the basic, just set of tools that we actually just need. To oh no, I see it all the time. You know, a lug nut here, yeah, a whole wrench here, and you know, a... crazy. Yeah, you're right. What's the bridge material that 148 thousand so dollars jumps right out? Bridge 33, little door is. Oh. That is a. Uh, um, that number is not. Is that, not right. Should that I mean, be there? Right, but so we have to pay for the entire bridge up front. And then we get reimbursed from the, the, the state. So it'll be a revenue offset. Yeah, yeah, partially, oh, yes. Okay. Um, that number goes down because we were funding that, that for the last couple of years waiting for that to happen. Mm -hmm. And that goes way back down. But that's overstated simply because of the grant that we got and the way that we're, we're gonna look at doing um, our grants a little differently so that they're funded a little, they show a little differently than budget. So they're not showing it here as a huge expense, even though it reimburses comes back and it all, mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it works itself out, but when you're looking at line items on the budget, it looks like it's really skewed. Mm -hmm. So we're going to work on that. But that's what that is. That's yes. part okay. of the payment for the, the Lily Bill Third Bridge that will be reimbursed. Was there any more grant money due to the uh, <clears throat> miss no. reading? We maxed out at 175. Yeah. So we're on the hook for whatever is additional. Yeah, yeah roughly $90,000. Yeah. Uh, I have spoken with the engineer involved. And I haven't really got a whole lot of anything back. Just saying, you know, I'm asking if they're going to help us out or whatever. We're not going to use them again. I, I, I won't do it. And they understand that. But they haven't come back to me with any, um, any resemblance of, of any sort of financial. Well, it's a good thing we didn't do a lot on our high re rehab. Well, yeah. That's where it all came from. Yeah, that that right. all pretty much plugged that whole thing. Yeah. yeah. It's a shame that, uh, yeah, we'll have to be careful on that. Well, I mean, you have an engineer for a reason, right? You have to depend on their numbers, and mm -hmm. then, unfortunately, they... Do we pay them the big dollars? Oh. Well, yeah. well, I'm just surprised they don't have an error in omission or well, some kind of a clause that says, you know, if we screw them. up... Yeah. Uh, and because they, I mean, they, their engineer had said to me up front, I messed up. You know, I messed up with calculations in, in my budget. Oops. Um, and, but they haven't done anything. So we'll, we'll see where it goes. I mean, maybe we'll get some money back. And is it worth they pursuing? Huh? Is it worth pursuing further? You won't get anything out of that. I mean, unless I'm going to pay for legal and all that. Oh, yeah. Even at that point, you might not get anything. Yeah. Or you would, but it would be cost you. It would cost you litigate. an arm and a leg to get right. there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. If only there was a select board member that said something at that point. <laughs> <laughs> but you ought to review the plans, too, and look at their quantities. And all right. So, I mean, we can look at salt. Uh, we can definitely look at that. I mean, we were over because we, we felt, I mean, I talked to Alan and he felt that he was scrimping where he thought he was scrimping. Of course, there was a learning curve there, but he wasn't. He said, we have the spreaders on low. We're not dumping just to dump. Um, but it's hard to tell. You know, we don't, we don't know what the winners are. Not that, it, not that it made a huge thing, but I think we still had... Um, I think McCullough was pulling material out there last year for the school. True, and Alan is pulling a lot of material. Which you won't have, you shouldn't have which any of that have. this year. Right. Because the school oh. has their own contract. Oh, when Dylan was... Uh, when Dylan was allowed, so we were under a contract. Well, there was sort of a contract in place, it really wasn't a big contract. No, it wasn't. Yeah. Um, that the town would supply the, the salt for that, and that yeah. stopped. Uh, and Alan thought he was pulling quite a bit out there. Right, so that should, you know, mm -hmm. so. help with that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>
I mean, I'm kind of one of those, you know, I kind of like to look at the salt, gravel, and sand all as kind of one, one identity, you know. I mean, it, it's kind of like the way the state looks at their plowing and their paving is they go through a really tough winter where they use a lot more salt than they don't do as much paving in the summer, you know. Right. So, you know, if we go through a winter where we have a tough winter, then maybe we don't do as much gravel in the spring and summer, you know. Or if we have a year where we don't have a lot of, use a lot of salt and sand, then we do a little more gravel on the roads or something, you know. I mean, it's kind of like almost like those three items kind of go together. Mm -hmm. um, for Unfortunately, manage. the town has, while there have been we miss it taking care of most everything else. They also have been this, we miss taking care of the gravel roads. There are several roads that they are grading ledge. Right. Mm -hmm. So that tells me there's no gravel left on the road. Mm -hmm. well, so no, I we're hoping to reclaim some of the gravel. So we've got years and years of windrows of good material on the edge of the road. So Alan and the boys up there have built this contraption that's, that's got a blade thing on it that will pull those windows back into the roadway. And we'll have to put a vegetation, we've got a great thing that does that. And they're trying to reclaim and take some of that, those years of, of gravel that was placed on that road and grade it off and bring it back into the road. And in hopes to save some of the gravel costs that we have down the road. We're hoping, we'll see how it goes. But that would help some, I'm sure. There's, according to Alan, there's a lot of good material that's been stockpiled on the side of the roadway through grading. And we're going to stop the in general. Mm -hmm. So we might see some savings there once we get into it. You know. I think the gravel is probably a little bit of the mud season thing. So that's the big question. What sort of a mud season are we going to have? How much gravel do we need for that? Um, you know, I, I don't know. It's, it's just those three items I agree with. They're, they're just, they're, the, they're large ticket items for sure, but they're also the biggest question marks. Crap shoot, you never know. Yeah, and we level fun at the end too because they're. They seem to be okay, but <clears throat> uh, I'm hoping to see a little bit of savings in cemeteries. I'm actually gonna that's all um, for maintenance in the cemeteries. And I'm gonna put that out to bid this year for the mowing and the edging and all that. Hoping to see some savings. I don't know. We're budgeting for the, the status quo, but there may be some savings there. Just for the competitive process. No, I think it's good to talk about these items that, you know, I don't think we, like, again, I don't think we need to play with any of the numbers at this session, but it kind of gives Greg's, Greg and Therese a few things to think about when we're putting the whole. Once we get the whole budget together and see, you know, because obviously there might be some departments that are less than last year, and some will be more, and then um, we can kind of figure out what the healthy balance is at the end. Within two weeks, you'll see fire, rec, constable. But typically, you you're. Know, you'll definitely get fire, rec, and a constable in the next in two weeks. But typically, you know, the public works one is what sixty percent of the budget. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so, sure. you know, it's a big, big piece. Yeah, it's big, biggest chunk. Mm -hmm. So, something. I don't, maybe this is something you could do, Teresa. But I like that Chris has sort of highlighted some areas that we could kind of come back to once we've seen the whole budget and talk about. And I wonder if there's a way to denote that so that when we're when we're starting to see the full budget together, and it's you know. A month or so from now, finding those spots in this older packet. If there's a, if it's on the, if it's sort of denoted on the budget of sure. with an asterisk or something that indicates to us, hey, we talked about maybe coming back and looking. Then when we're thinking through it on our own before coming to discuss, we've sort of already highlighted those spots to come back to. Um, yeah, I made a few notes online too, so we can. Okay. Like, it, sure yeah, it doesn't even have to be she's anything major. Just a little. Something that indicates to all of us that hey, this is something we mm -hmm. talked about in a meeting that sure. you know we might look back at. Because sure. yeah. I, I like that, Chris. I like that you were kind of bringing our attention to certain spots, and I think that's helpful. And the tough thing too is, you know, it, 
not that our cost is trending upwards, because I think we just had budgets that just were not ideal or realistic. But our, re but our revenue, for the most part, typically trends in a little bit of a downward position. So you're, you know, you're going up on one and down on another. Um, so that will be a challenge. I mean, every time one of these, you know, a house comes off mm -hmm. right? Right. or a piece of property or something like that, uh, that's revenue that we're losing in, in the town. So you have to think about that as well. Any further discussions in regards to the public works portion of the budget? Well, a small question. It probably has nothing to do with, well, it does because what happened uh, with the budget for the Highway Equipment Trust Fund for budget of last year? I mean, considerably lower. Then, we, then we're budgeting for two pieces of equipment, which you add them all together, it comes up to $110,000. Because what happened is, it was an odd, it was an odd thing that happened here. You were, not you, but you know, Bethel was transferring the, Hundred and ten thousand to the highway equipment fund. Right. But what it wasn't really open, like to disclose to the voters, was you were using that money to pay loans back. So I thought what would look more transparent to the voters was if we actually showed the payments in your budget, and then the difference is getting moved over. Okay. Because what happened in the fire department was they're not even budgeting enough money to cover the payments. Oh. So that fund was in a shortfall. Well, they're budgeting enough. No, they weren't. Well, no, but I mean like going forward. No, I meant you know, for their trucks. Right. I'm sorry, but not they the were overall prior budget. But so to me, it didn't seem. I felt it should be more transparent. Dave. So that's why. So I thought. Well, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I and that's why. Exactly. So this way you can see oh, that no. the when you know how much is actually water heater. So <laughs> and I can see it. So this, this made me feel a little more comfortable because yeah. Yeah. we really don't yeah. disclose yeah. too much yeah. about the fund. So I guess the same thing with fire. And if you have a capital plan that you do out front, you can see that too. We'll see that. Okay. We did the same thing with fire. And yeah, like the fire department, we ended up slightly coming ahead on one piece of equipment there, so it threw the fund off. What is it? At the end of next year, then that fund comes back into the positive, right? Yeah, well, so. a couple years out, right? Didn't it? Yeah. I can't, I, I got this. But that was due to the last piece of equipment that yeah. we yeah. had to get, that we hadn't figured on getting. Well, and here was interesting, too, because I've never seen it before, where a town actually bought two dump trucks at once. I've seen them, I've heard of, so. Oh, now you've seen it. Surprise! Usually it's about one of those puppies, but I'm bad. Surprise! 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 Bought two. One spent half the time down. Yeah, yeah. I was like, wow. So that's why. And it's you like one, it's the same thing. Fire. Okay, it's more transparent. All right. I really appreciate all the work that you, you folks put in on this, though. I mean, it's. And you can clearly see that you can clearly see the work that the department heads are putting in for sure. these as well. Yeah, they do. Agree. Especially well, policies. Yeah. Well, they're being you yeah, know they're all accountable for it. And yeah. Whenever something's not right, Therese gives me a mom voice and they figure it out real quick. <laughs> it works every time. Yeah. <laughs> but it's before, it, it, or if I see something yeah. that if I see something that looks. Yeah, I have a question about it. I'm not shy about asking. No, it's good. And, and it's nice, too, Dave, because the department heads now code, and even Dave Aldergetti, you know, comes in and codes fire bills. So it makes sense they know, you know, they're buying and sweating it out. And they get budgets like you guys do. So, so it's good. No, everybody's good. All right. All right, we'll move on. Uh, last time we had talked about the the long-term debt note with Mascoma. Um, you know, we had talked about the 20, 25, and 30 year, um, and we decided as a board that we would like to move forward with the 25 year note. So this is this is the note in which uh, Teresa's put together with the bank. So we'll be, they'll be lookout 
Uh, this is what we're looking for. Is a motion to sign the change in terms of agreement, resolution, and tax certificate with Mascoma Bank for the one million four hundred forty-four thousand dollar note for twenty-five years, for the first ten years at three percent. I so move. Say lay down right out there, Maury. So move. <laughs> so this this one here, change in terms agreement, that's yep. going from one point seven two five. To, to the, the yep. one yep. before yep. the yep. reimbursement yep. came in, right. the final reimbursement. Uh, which is what we said we okay. would do last year. Right. Now okay. we need to do five down with the FEMA money, yep. which we got. Right. Well, which I physically got all of it yet, but, yep. but okay. we finally settled FEMA. So that money, um, we have the first round of it, and the second round should be coming our way. Um, so that's what we did, is we bought it down with that, which is what we said we would do. Mm -hmm. Did somebody second that one? So that, okay. Okay, thank you. I was just sitting on the guy that. I was waiting. Okay, no, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure I got it in there. Thank you. Okay, all in favor? All right. Uh, so the budgeted amount that we'll see in the budget will be the 82,945 Yep, and you'll see it. It's in the highway budget. Yeah, it's in the highway budget. Sorry. Highway budget. Do you already have their copy in there? Mm -hmm. Are we good? Yeah, I waited the form yeah. for signatures. Yeah. And, um... And it's oh, already yeah. in the budget. Yes. No, I didn't see it. Yes, it's on the bottom. Last page, last one. Debt financing. Last year we budgeted the 109. Oh, yeah, I got it. Well, the other good thing is, too, is because we budgeted the 10906, we budgeted for a payment. So I was also able to take that money payment plus the FEMA and put all that down on it. So hmm. help us buy it down a little bit. So that it's all that. Gulp. So I think there's three tags or four, I can't remember, and then Pam obviously has to sign them out. your hiccups with anything uh, with getting the plows out a little early today or everything no. run? Yeah, I don't think we received any complaints at all. We had a lot of extra plows out from most people. I went to... Um, well, the first time out Friday night, or I should say 3.30 Saturday morning, they could have waited another hour. Because <laughs> them babies are loud the first time over the road. Yeah. Yeah, my, dude, my new puppy dog, well, he's not a puppy anymore, but he's, he likes the sound of it, so he barks and barks and barks every time they come back. I'm with you. I have to wait until we're not here. Get a snow road, you never hear them. Huh? Once, once you get a snow road, you never hear them. Nope. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Friday night, I heard them when they came off the car, which is a mile, it would be seven tenths of a mile away. Yeah. See, I'm on my bay road, so I hear it. My, my dog hears it all the way top of the road from when they're driving by. I don't even have to be on my own, but he's barking. Which is it. That's good to have a dog that tells you what's happening. Yeah, not at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. Are you supposed to get up on? <laughs> yeah. No, I think it went, went pretty well. We had a little hiccup with the plow. We got it running, we got it going, and, and it ran good all day. So he used that, uh, the, the blower 
on the track around. We saw that the logo was out. Yeah, it came down through town and it was it was hung. It looks like it hung hung up on the curve of the door open and nobody around. Oh really? <laughs> At the top of Pleasant Street. Oh, the top oh, of the yeah, church school. That they had a chair bolt that they had to work on or something. Like yeah. Anyway, the parts. But yeah. after they got it fixed, they said it would be good all day. And is the uh, the downtown unit all put together now for? Yeah. yeah. Pick up truck and plow and all that stuff. Yeah, using it. So everything's yeah. all set there. Because yeah, last time you were still in the process of purchasing the piece of equipment. Right? No, it was some wings that we had to get. Okay. Yeah, we got the wings and it's all good. Yeah, it was ready. I'll be ready to go. The only thing we're waiting for is all that is the spray line right on the bed and the all that. Why would you try? Right. She can't do it. <laughs> As far as the plowing and the sand and all that, it's all running great. It's all good. Doug didn't get his wing on? Huh? Doug didn't have his wing on. Uh, I don't know why he didn't have his wing on, I'm not sure. And Alan was on his, his hydraulics blew up. The hydraulic hose went bad on his wing. Yeah. So he scored the one from uh, the local the parts store here. Hopefully get that in soon. Good. So, that was the only real issue they had, I think. It's not much snow here to put it in. Ah, first snow again for Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm worried about the ice and stuff tonight. It freeze up tonight. Mm -hmm. Morgan will be in early to do the rest of Main Street and see how ice is. I think there's something on the red thing. Uh, yeah. I know it's the abandoned cars in there. And the no, parking lot. No, no. It's over so at, uh, that. It's over at S&S &S Auto with 40 other ones. <laughs> I have a new piece on that. Only 40? Is that my outlawed voice? We'll talk about that later. No, but the other one's going out of the white church parking lot too. That's good. All right, we will uh, move on. Next piece we had was the the sewer use ordinance. Yeah, so these are the this is the water and sewer uh, ordinance that I brought. I brought the water ordinance to you at the last meeting, um, and there were a couple of revisions that we had to it. Um, and you would ask me to put together the, the sewer to kind of go along with it. So that's what these are, the final versions of the two ordinance changes. Um, so it's really cleaning up some of the, the, the vacancy rate stuff that we, we kind of mm -hmm. been talking about. And what it does is basically says that um, if, the, regardless of what type of property it is, if the property is, is completely unoccupied and we if it's completely unoccupied, it can be put onto the vacancy rate. And the town has the option, which they will exercise, to shut the water off to the property. Uh, along with that, it also cleans up the, the vacancy rate on the fee schedule on the second page. Um, it originally just said vacancy rate of $80.80 for the water and whatever it was for sewer. It's $120.70, and it didn't really stipulate that man how that was calculated or what that or if that was just a fixed rate. So we Clean that up and so that's per the equivalent unit and then it's based on the calculation of the last time they were uh, that it was occupied. So um, just asking for approval of these two ordinances to, uh, to clean up the vacancy rate for the water and the sewer system. So why do we have a disconnect and reconnect fee for the sewer? I mean it's not like we disconnect or reconnect anything. Well is it just a reactivation of the account? I mean what what's the it's I can see the water. It's just, yeah. just semantics, really. You're doing it for the water. I mean, we can eliminate that if we wanted to. But the idea is that you're reestablishing the accounts. There's some administrative costs that are there, uh, not just the physical going out and turning the water off. There's some administrative, you know, setting up the account and getting everything back up to where it should be and getting everything in memory and all that stuff that they do that I'm not fully totally aware of. But um, I think that's where those fees can kind of be established is based on that, that part of it. Okay. Because once we, you know, once we put somebody on a Vegas rate, there's some process there to, to do that and to make sure that it's, it's kept up that way. So you don't know, appropriately on that. So, um, so that's what this is. Uh, if there are any questions, we'd be happy to, to answer them. But it's pretty good. So this is effective in January? Yeah. Yeah, so this has to be, uh, the format we use, this has to be posted in five places. And the newspaper, uh, a quick synopsis, I think, can go to the newspaper and there's a, I believe it's a 60 day limit, a uh, time that starts uh, for somebody to come back and, and petition to, to uh, discuss this and appeal this. So um, the January 15th is when it will actually become legal and, and be part of our ordinance at that point. Okay. Any 
Any further discussion from the board? We need two motions then, one for each. Yep. So I will entertain a motion. Um, first, we'll talk about, we'll just do the water first, means that was brought before the board last time. So a, um, entertain a motion for the amendment put before us um, in regards to the uh, vacancy uh, corrections to the water ordinance. Okay. So Dave moved it and Lindley seconded it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so that's for the water. And then I will also entertain a motion for the sewer um, for the amendment um, put forward as well um, in regards to the occupancy or the uh, unoccupancy uh, pre. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Send a mark fee for signing all this paper. Yeah. Do you can get that? That's the fee, the board fee, twenty-five dollars signature. <laughs> <laughs> I must have missed it. Administrative fee. Like, <laughs> it was. It was, it was, it was, it was just, we were just talking about it. Part of the administrative fee. I will add your comment. More comment. Yeah, there, there we go. go. There we, we go. go. Like Congress, we can vote ourselves right. There Pretty you go. Much unlimited comp time at this point. Well, we all live like that. Then. <laughs> <laughs> Eliminate the unlimited comp time. Give yourself a good word of it. Parking ordinance. Yeah, so we got. Um, <laughs> All right, so we're on the parking lot ordinance. Yes, Perfect. so. Um, We've been kind of talking here and there about uh, some sort of a, a uh, amendment to the, the parking ordinance, the traffic ordinance that we have. This is kind of what I've come up with. Um, along with this proposed ordinance, there is a the parking permit um, that this is kind of based off of. Um, so what I've done is, um, so the concept is that we will have, because we've had issues with plowing this parking lot and the cars park kind of sporadically throughout the parking lot all the time and overnight, it's tough for us to plow. And um, what I've come up with is this concept of where we will, people that are, are permitted parkers for parking overnight, um, the tenants that live there and the owners that live there will have a parking permit that they'll get. That'll be good for, for the year that they're in. So if you get it in July, it's good until December 31st. Um, and there will be a designated spot on the uphill side where there will be signs posted for overnight parking lot. And that's where everybody will then park, is on that uphill side. And anybody, so when we come in to plow at 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning, and there's cars that are parked on the downhill side, we are within our right, by ordinance, to plow to tow those cars out. Because they shouldn't be there. You should, it's overnight parking by permit only. So that will allow us to have that whole bottom side and the middle section, and hopefully part of this other end, we can clean all that. Originally, there was some thought about them having the blue light and having cars move to the bottom. The more I think about that, I think the logistics of that are not going to work. Um, so, you know, once those cars and those people that work overnight and they leave and we have an opportunity, we'll definitely get in there and clean those sections out. But it won't be, we won't, have, we won't have make it necessary for those cars to then move to the southern side like we originally had talked about. I think it's just not going to work. Logistically, it just won't work. Um, but by doing this and having the permitted overnight people parking in a designated area that leaves that entire or the majority of that parking lot open so that we can come in really quickly and plow it and, and move on. How many people do you think that is? Oh, I did the count at one point. You did a count. It's, it's 10 to 15. Yeah. Is my recollection is that's um, and just thinking about like 
So we have we have two cockadrill parks at their they park at their spots. Um, but Kevin has four units. One that has one, one that has two, so that's five. Um, another one that has one, and another one that potentially has two, but right now they only have one. I'm missing something here. The credit union folks that park in there on. Yeah, and then. Um, no, the, the Matt, tenants, uh, uh, credit union tenants. It's now in Ruth Clubs building. Well, I yeah, parked there, and then there. a few folks in this apartment. Right. Except they can park they can park there at night, but during the day they have to ship to this lot. So it, it, it fluctuates, but it's about 10 to 15, 15 being, I think, the max. You have, a, you have some criteria to get an overnight parking permit. You just can't ask for it. Right. Yeah, I think. We have to be permit. We have to come into the town. I have a reason for wanting that overnight. Yeah, so other than I want. Yeah, so the permit has stipulations, and it shows that you have to. You have to show, have a contact number on that, of course, but you have to have your landlord's name, landlord's contact number. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have to show that you're basically the resident of that, of this area, mm -hmm. and not just somebody coming in overnight. Now, I think, you know, having additional spots, we talked about having like 15 spots. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the likelihood of those all being full are pretty, pretty low. If somebody were to stay overnight with their friend or something, as long as they parked up there, I don't think it's a major issue. You know, it's really, this was really intended for people parking on the bottom side and not allowing us to come through the cloud thing out. But, um, so who does the enforcement side of this guy? Who's the, it'll have to be who's the parking police? It'll be a constant because it's an ordinance, which is a, a law. So, so the, 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 the kind there, of the trick is having too many. So what the permit, um, the permit limits each address to just two permits. So if, you, if you've got a friend over there, they could come pay $20 or whatever and get a permit if they wanted, or find someone to park in, in theory. Um, it's not really isn't designed for the short term overnight people that are staying one night. It's for people that are living there or people that are staying for an extended amount of time. So the permit allows for, for two permits. The, the, the ordinance allows for two permits. Per I, I just wanted to clarify. So like for the Lavier block that has multiple units in it, that's per unit. Per unit. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yes. So that that street address, unit one. Exactly. ABC or whatever. Okay. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so that kind of is meant to control somebody who has a bunch of friends over and they're staying for a week. You know, they can't do that. You can only have two permits mm -hmm. for that address. Um, and I think that that would control that. I think 15 spots is kind of what we talked about. Um, and I've been playing with the, the theory for the signs. Um, the easy sign would be, you know, permit parking only between these signs. But I would also like to have people be able to park in those spots during the day, just not over there. So I'm working with what this kind of the language of the science would look like. It may, you know, say something like between these hours, permit only, yeah, permit parking only after eight o'clock or whatever. Six, it is. six um, to six or something. Right, right. Um, yeah, because that some, allows somebody with a permit comes home from from work and wants to get in that spot, and there's somebody parked there. But there's 15 spots. Yeah. So again, the likelihood of them finding the spot, and you know, it will say that, that you have to be out of that spot by whatever that time is. Six o'clock, or wherever we decide. Yeah. So, yeah. once people are getting off work or getting home, we're hoping that the other people have left eating pizza or doing whatever, and then they're going to go on the spots are open. I mean, the challenge, anything you will have is, I mean, we don't have a full time enforcement person. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And, nor, nor I don't think that this parking ordinance is really meant to have someone going around, you know, being, parking you know, being the parking meter person. but. Yeah. Um, I, it does allow us if all of a sudden there becomes a vehicle that's kind of abandoned, you yeah. know, like we've had in the mm -hmm. past. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we can plow people in too. You know, <laughs> if you're not supposed to be there, you can get plowed in. You may not get towed, but you may not be able to get out. You know, there, it, that's just something that we're not. You're right. I agree. We're not going to go around everybody every night. We're not going to be checking the parking. That's not going to happen. But I think the majority of the people that are overnight parkers are people who live here, and they're going to go by these rules, and they're going to have no issue. They do kind of have their own but even if you, even there. if you did get the uh, abandoned vehicle owner that has a permit there, at least you'll know who the permit is right. for, and you can track mm -hmm. them down that way. You know, or in the past, you just have a car that's abandoned and you don't know who owns it. Well, and 
something I was wondering, and this might be a little bit fraught, is if the if the permit signs, because I was wondering if you were going to go the direction of, you know, after a certain time, in the evening or night, it becomes a designated spot right. to sort of prevent people from parking there. You know, if they go to Babes and they're, you know, getting there at 8 p.m., they're not parking in a designated right. spot. Mm -hmm. um, but could, could the signs have a tow truck number to call that will be at the owner's expense? So say... Say the lot is full, and somebody who's a permitted person wants to be able to park. They could call that number. That that car would be towed. Or I don't know the legality of that. Okay, so this is why I said it might be wrong. I don't think have the authority because they're not. We're, what what we're doing with that towing is that we're uh, we're enforcing our own ordinance mm -hmm. with our constable who has that authority to do that. Right. But our constables rarely on duty. True. At night. So. I think, well, I mean, I unfortunately, think what happened is the if the parking lot was completely full and somebody had to a spot, maybe yeah. overnight or not overnight. Yeah. Well, let's yeah. say it's an overnight yeah. person, you would have yeah. to yeah. file a complaint with the town. Right. And then when he's on duty, maybe he goes through the parking lot. Yeah, I'll look because I know there's an enforcement section in the, the, the ordinance, mm -hmm. and I'll have to see what that says. We may have to revise that. It may, like, like Therese just said, maybe we need to change it so it's the, my, myself, the road foreman, the constable, so there's multiple people that can mm -hmm. enforce that and make a call that. Right. Have to right. And maybe it's not a number you put on the sign, but it's a number that yeah, yeah. when you get the permit, you're given a sheet that says if there's ever an issue, that, you know, this is how you address that or right. something. So then it's not just random people calling, it's you paid for your spot, and if you can't get to your spot, yeah. here's your recourse. So. Because the parking you're... permit will be visible in the car, right? Yeah, it'll be So a... probably the road crew would be like, they could see the permit, they realize, oh, they probably, you know, Lindley didn't have parking, so they I just wonder if, a judgment call. I just wonder if maybe we should have something in here that spells out the non-permitted parking. So if someone does park in a, one of those spots that's not permitted, at right now, there's really not much we could do other than maybe tow it, but that's what our ordinance says. Um, you know, I don't know. Maybe it needs to be a little more yeah. severe than that, and maybe people won't park there. I don't know. My guess is probably at least for the near future, we won't have that issue. But if you know, if when the buildings do get full, then we could have to recircle mm -hmm. the wagons on some enforcement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, I think the majority of people that are, that the cars are overnight is because of it. And so I don't know if it's going to be a necessary, a large issue, as long as we get those all rounded up into one section. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it solves itself. I mean, you drive through here right now, and that, that parking lot at 3 o'clock in the afternoon is pretty, pretty empty at that point. Well, you know, like mm -hmm. the uphill section. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, there's not like a full parking lot. And my guess is that during the day, you know, six o'clock in the morning, there's probably all the cars that are there. People that right. they're just, but they're just scattered. And it's just, yeah, this it's all it's it's it, yeah. Well, the other thing you may run into is if there's an event here at the town hall in the evening, and that parking lot gets full pretty quick. You know, so I'll... true. But there's a lot of spots on the bottom, and if we do this right, we can. I mean, we'll just have to play. Yeah, yeah, those, yeah, are, yeah. those are all good yeah, points. Yeah, and that's why I'm playing with this yeah. sign as to what exactly is it going to be. And how are we going to allow these parking stalls to be usable during the day and not at night? No. Well, and I like the idea of having them be a little flexible. Yes. Because I think a lot of people do leave and their car isn't there, so why not have those spots that are a little closer to downtown right. accessible during the day, but not blocked up at night? Right. right. So. First of all, Mo took away our comp time, and now, <laughs> now you're taking away our parking spots, so there's no best way to be on the slot for you. Yes. Right. Something I was, I was curious, you had mentioned, and this was a little while back, about maybe regaining some of the bank parking spots. Is that still in the works, or has that moved? Uh, yeah, I talked to Jason about it a little bit, and we're still trying to work it all the way through. It sounds as though we might go pick up two or three of their customer parking spots, mm -hmm. and possibly one of their employee parking spots by moving over the handicap to the other side where it should be anyway, on the downhill side, and restriking it in a certain way so that we play it. That won't happen until spring when we restrike the whole thing. Okay. Um, the other might happen hopefully soon, where he takes down a couple of the signs for the, uh, the customer parking. Mm -hmm. And instead of having five, I think, he talked about just going down the tree. So we pick up a couple of them, uh, which helps. 
it would have been helps. Yeah. But uh, I'll, I'll, next time I see him, I'll talk with him again about it. I think I had I had put it out there to him, and I think he had to talk with the whoever the the regional bosses or whatever. I don't, I don't know, but whoever he had to talk to, his, his supervisor. So I'll see where he what came about. So I think right now it sounds as though we want to look at possibly how we're going to regulate people that are parking. Well, I don't know. I think this covers everybody else. I mean, it basically says that if you don't have a permit and you're parking there overnight, that you can be towed. With that said, though, I think you need to expand who can authorize the tow. Yes, yes. Yeah, and I'll look at the enforcement piece of that section of that. Your, uh, your, your signs are going to say uh, uh, parking permit from 7 o'clock to whatever, you know, whatever time you set up, right? Yeah, it'll say something like uh, parking, Perfect. overnight parking by permit only. Whatever time you want. Or, or parking, by, parking by permit only. 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. or something right. like that. Okay. Yeah. I just haven't really got that all over. But we should we should have that in the policy. You know, we should have the time in here. Because what's gonna happen is it says overnight. Right now we don't we haven't defined what overnight is, right? I mean most mm -hmm. of us kinda know what overnight is, you know, but sure. plain devil's advocate, I sure. park in a spot and you tell me, right? And it says overnight parking, and I'm going to come back on the town because you, you told me and said, well, you told me at 6:30. That's not overnight, you know. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. So it, yeah, it, we probably not only do we need yeah. a sign, but it should yeah. be in our ordinance sure. that this is for whatever 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. or 7 sure. p.m. to 6 a.m. Right. Well, whatever we establish. Yeah, I'll find the overnight. So what does the board think about hours? What, what do you think are reasonable hours uh, to allow somebody who does not have a permit to park in those spots? Well, I mean, I would say normally you'd have to, I mean, majority of people either leave or are coming back from work in the five to six o'clock hour, right? right? So you're, you know, somewhere between that time. I think five o'clock is fine. I think, you, I think you should be out of that overnight, overnight spot by five o'clock. Yeah, so then somebody who's working downtown park right. there, I mean, aside from, you know, restaurants, and something that's, Later, and it's not really it's so much. Going. Well, if you've got somebody who, if the streets are packed, you know, cockadoodles in full bore, and both sides of the road are plug solid on a Friday evening, and they go park up in the town garage and a uh, town lot, and it's 7:30, mm -hmm. and the only spot that they've got to back into is one of those spots on the high side. They got to find another place. That's, it. that's and, but how often does that really happen? I don't know. I know. Well, it, more, more and more it is. I, mean, I, I know that's on a Friday night. It yeah, can be pretty busy down there. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. I mean, 7 30 on a Friday, and Saturday, Friday it can be pretty this busy. lot yeah. starts to fill. And it's a lot of it is cockpit old babes. It really is mm -hmm. driven by both. And so, you can, what you can are the people that, that spend the night here? What, what do they do with, the, with their cars? Well, I think that's some of why what I think Greg was saying earlier was why cars get so scattered if somebody's coming home and they just park in the first available spot. And I've seen the trend that the people, the cars that I know that are that belong to people who live here will park as close as they can. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the only reason if you come out in the morning and there's four open spaces and then a car and then two open spaces and then another car is because that lot was full when they got home. Mm -hmm. You know, they will by nature just drift as close to what you home want. as they can. And, and so I think your, your idea, at least my understanding, is to consolidate right. those people right. regardless. So at that point, then you really want to look at the 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. or 5.30 or 6 when people are coming back and say, you know what, if you're here temporarily for a cockadoodle, for babes, for the laundromat, whatever, you might have to park a little further away. Right. Because if the goal really is to consolidate, then somebody coming home at 5 p.m., if their slot is taken, they're not necessarily going to out at nine to see is there an open spot. Right. But this is also mainly mainly just for winter maintenance too. Yeah. So we could also put in the ordinance this is you know between whatever. Same as November. You know, 15th, May first to uh, April. Yeah, yeah, we already got an ordinance. The ordinance already says that you can't park on the high on the roadway 
it's November 15th, April 15th. And so do these overnight spots become the same, the same as that? Right. What's the one piece that Mass Soma is open? They closed. They're, like, they're done by like five years. Uh, yeah, so well, that's a good thing. I mean, if I had to guess, some people will park in their stalls. Yeah. It's not very regular. I mean, were you thinking it should be as early as five or maybe like six or? Or maybe seven. I mean, it, it, maybe, maybe that's well, actually so the, the, the later you push it, the, the later somebody may have to come down in their pajamas to see if right. if there's a, if my spot's open because it you know it wasn't right. open. Uh, I like the idea of just doing it seasonally, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The rest of the year, who gives it? Hoot. Where right. people are working. Right. I mean, really. Because you're right. Like, it's about consolidating. It would only be so that we can maintain the area. Right. Right. That's it. So maybe we, we stipulate that this is only, the permits are only required between whatever, November 15th and April 15th. Yeah. Matt? Yeah. Matt, I think so. I mean, because yeah. uh, I don't think you need to chase it all year. Right. I mean, we're just looking at trying to do winter maintenance. But I think we need to the average person to pull over in there and not come and get back after work anyway to your rail. Right. Well, and, and I, I'm actually, so I agree with you, Greg, but just to play devil's advocate uh -huh. on this is um, thinking about humans and habits and forming habits that then stick. Um, are we shooting ourselves in the foot if we say it's only seasonal, that instead of getting people into a good habit that they'll stick with, then you know, are you then having to figure out how to reinforce it? I mean, maybe not. There are people that park in the lot overnight that as soon as April 15th happens, they're parking on the street right. in front of their building. And as soon as November 15th happens, they're back in the lot. And so they may self-enforce, I don't know. My answer to that would be, and again, just playing the way, is which challenge is, is gonna be more difficult? Getting them retrained in the winter or dealing with all the Main Street people that are not able to park in those small spots? Right. Or fine parking when it's a nice sunny day and business is booming. I, I don't know which is. Because yeah. what I don't want to do is, is designate those spots and lose those spots to, you know, patrons. That's what I'm, the balance here, I think, is, is how do we do it? Make it work so that we can maintain the area but not lose those spots during the day when they're needed. So I hear what you're saying, totally. I mean, Yeah, you know, and I, I actually agree sure, with but, the seasonal. More, I just wanted to sort of hear yeah. it out or hear if anybody had any other thoughts. Well, it's important. I think it should be a seasonal, <coughs> you know. Yeah, I think the seasonal works. Yeah. Yeah. And what we always do is just go to the, the landlords and say, you know, come, I don't know, October, go to the late landlord and say, look, this has to be permanent. Time to get the permit, and everybody come in and get the right. permit. Mm -hmm. There's a set of instructions that go with it. It says this is what you do. And they make a copy and give it to them. Right. So you have well, it. or each person comes in and gets an individual permit. If you're going to have it for half a year, you can't charge 20, uh, 20 bucks. You're going to drop it down to 10. Because it's just a no. seasonal. We used to charge 25. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but if you're just having it for half a year. Administration fee. There's at least a half an hour of administration on that. It's still going to take you the same amount of time to write the permit. Of course, yeah. I was just. <laughs> There's an enforcement. The, the decal itself is about two bucks. And we changed colors every year, too. So and we're, we're changing colors every year, too. We are. Oh, yeah. Ah. The color goes hey. by here. It's uh, non tax revenue. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There's an administrative cost. So, Greg, on here, on the, on the permit application, you've got commercial vehicles and temporary plates would be excluded from yes. the beginning. Yes. So, if somebody works for a business but lives in town and has a commercial vehicle from their work, then that, they couldn't get a permit, just, just throwing it out. And temporary plates usually lead to permanent plates, but they I'm do. not sure why tem temporary plates. Maybe we just say something like proof of residency must be. Yeah. Whatever, whatever. Yeah. And you're not. Yeah. Okay. Right. And they're only usually like a 20 day play in, you know. Well, it's supposed yeah. to be. Whatever, it's supposed to be, but. It, yeah, <laughs> people are going to get a new long. car every now and then. And... Okay. So, did you decide on a, did you 5 p.m. to 7 a.m., or did you decide on that time? And I said, Oh, I think we were. I think we agreed on the seasonality of the November 15th to April 15th. Yeah, um, I'd throw out some of the seven. 
Just, just for like five to seven. I'm for five because there's going to be some that are going to push it. If you mm -hmm. have a seven seven, some will still be there at seven thirty. But, but on the mm -hmm. downside, it's really not as important if someone left at eight o'clock versus seven. PM. It, you know, well, I'm saying in the morning. You know, if someone right. if someone left an hour late, I don't think that's going to be the end of the world. Sure. Right. I mean, I it's would, more so the other way around, and getting them into days, the right so. spot for the night. Yeah, he's going to say Greg wants the plow to go through. Right. Yeah. So if they leave an hour late or two hours late the next day, that's I don't think that's good. a big deal. Yeah. We well, just want to get them. I'm, I'm a little confused on, are, do you have to leave this spot? I work from home, so I don't... Yeah. Well, my vehicle out no, no, no. every day. No, it will be open to anybody okay. at that point, so it's, right? It's only, it's so, so permit really or non permit. It's the start time of right. in the evening is what we're So if you're staying at. home all day and you want to leave your yeah. permitted vehicle there, I'm you not can stay going there all day. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 The only caveat to that is that the traffic ordinance does say that if you leave a car unattended in a, on a town road or a parking lot for, I think it's like four days or a week or something like that, then it can be ticketed and so, yeah. I mean, I gotta it's go get groceries. Which we've never done. We've got to get rid of them leaving yeah. so that area can get cleaned up too. Right. right. So if somebody leaves that can there all day, it's going to get plowed in or plowed in. Yeah, exactly. All right, I'll go with five. Five o'clock? Yeah. Five p.m.? Five p.m. To five a.m.? Yeah. Yeah. Five p.m. Yeah. 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 Ye
this is the third time now we've gone over that. Uh, I guess. So um, last time we discussed this, uh, there was some talk about integrating the cost of meters, even though we know we're not a short term thing, but there was something we were talking about uh, what the cost of adding the meters would be. And then, uh, then we had talked about um, what it would look like if we went back to um, the multifamily or commercial individual units being assessed at a, a one EU instead of a whatever the bedroom EU was. Mm -hmm. So the last three um, sets of data here, that's what I've done. Um, so the addition of meters, that's, that's simply what the, the quarterly payment would look like with the addition of $400,000 note at um, either 20 years of 1%, 20 years of 2%, 30 years of 1%, or 30 years of 2%. And, the, and that note is to cover the cost of installation, the, the note, meters well, themselves and the installation. That's what I assume. So the $400,000 came from a grant we applied for that did include installation. And that was years ago. That was like three years ago. So that number is probably gone up. But I was using the best data I had. Right. So we applied for and got a state revolving fund. We didn't take it, but we got a state revolving fund loan for $400,000 for purchase installation of meters throughout the system. And that's, that, so that's what this looks like. It's that payment. And that would just, so that's just the payment for that, that that's isn't, just installation. isn't calculating in anybody's time to then calculate right. and exactly. that's just the units and the installation. Okay, and just wanted to make sure. That doesn't include the um, whatever data collection we have to do, whether that's manually through a little reader on the house or digitally through a battery operated um, sensor thing or if it's a, a telemetry system with a satellite like Smart. Mrs. Spider was talking about. I mean that can be done, but it's in cost and it's all out of sight. So we may need two or three because I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, that's not it. This is simply Just the four hundred thousand dollars to purchase and install the mm -hmm. um, and then at the different rates that we're looking at. Um, the state revolving fund will do a, will do twenty and thirty year and we as are assuming a one percent, but until they, they kind of fully do what they do, it could be as much as a two percent as well. So, can, can you just take us through the categories quickly for the um, when you're looking at this one? It says um, addition of meters in mm -hmm. the blue. So that's the one that's just the meters. So if you look at the column before, yep, uh, the cost. So it says uh, old cost and new cost. Mm -hmm. So the new cost is what we calculated with the um, going from all houses being a one to houses being based on their actual bedrooms and what they need to look like. So, we, so what I did for this addition of meters is you took the new cost plus, so whatever that number is, that budget number, mm -hmm. plus the payment for the $400,000 yep. divided by um, the EUs divided by uh, four, for four quarters. And that's what the payment comes up to. So really all the difference between the new cost number and the 20 year is the addition of the payment in the interest. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. So, so in this case here, I'll just use my house as an example. Um, so current cost would be $115 under our current system. Right. If we went to the new cost system, which was you know, the equivalency based on the bedrooms of the um, um, you know, that would go from $115 to $161 right. a quarter. And if, <clears throat> if we base that on with the, um, you know, of course, right now, right now in the system we have, we can use an abundance of water, you know, we don't get charged extra. Um, if we went to the bedroom rate, it would be the same thing. It would be no metering, it would be based on bedroom usage, um, which looks like anybody that has a home larger than two bedrooms will have to pay more um, from, from the looks of it. And then if we go to the meters, the meters, um, it's hard to run an average, but if you went to the meters, it would probably be another 15 to $20 a quarter on top of the new cost. This is where we go down a rabbit hole big time. 
So, for instance, at my house right now, if we went to meters, would, it would almost be like 60 or $70 a quarter more. It may not be. Here's why. Okay. Because your new cost, or even your old cost, would be lower because you're only paying your fixed cost, mm -hmm. not your consumption cost. So, be, if, I, if I wanted to kind of go through that whole exercise, I would have had 16 more columns on this spreadsheet. I didn't want to do that. But the theory, if we went to meters, is that we wouldn't have this EU based rate of 115.42 or whatever it is. That would actually be lower because our base rate is our operating, our, our fixed cost. Right. And then you have a, a, a new piece that's your consumption cost. So there's a possibility that those numbers could go down a bit, or they could go up. Mm -hmm. But I was trying to make this as simple as possible just based off of kind of the rationale that we're using now. Yeah, because you're right, if you think about it, it it's, could go either way because if you also, you're not carrying in there that if you put in touch pads, you're going to have to have something yes. manually. And your consumption could be really high. Those 300, right. you know, meters, that many, three, something like that, for water meters, so you have someone manually reading them every quarter. So the more I think about this, I, got some more expensive. I think this addition of meters is not necessarily an accurate number. And I think I could fix it pretty easy. I think what we could do is just take the, the fixed cost plus the payment and run it with those numbers. Because you could make your base Same. rate could be based on all your fixed, your operating costs and then your consumption costs could cover your debt. Or variables. Well, well yeah. yeah, not just debt. I think it'd be, well, mm -hmm. what would it? Because what it's doing now is it's basically covering everything. Here, our fixed rate, which is our our new cost, right. is covering everything, hundred percent of that. Yeah. If we added meters, we would have a different pay, we have a different billing structure completely because we would have our fixed cost or whatever that base rate. Well, you're still going to have the fixed cost plus the plus right. consumption. So we have a base rate, the meter, yeah. whatever comes which with the be meters. Lower. Yeah. Divided by the like number exactly. of accounts. So it's 80% of whatever that number, whatever that number, 80% plus the payment mm -hmm. divided by all the other stuff. That would spit out a fixed cost base rate. And then we would have to figure out how the consumption would relate to that. Whether you get 100 it's, gallons per day is based into your base cost. And right. This is why we're talking about consumption rate. Right. Yeah. 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 Makes sense. But in, in, yeah, in theory, you're, you could be paying less or more. It's, it's hard to tell. but. For, for this, it, this is just basically saying that if we status quo and we add meters to the system, this is what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Just adding the meters. Right. Okay. And then the next column, the one EU per apartment unit. So forget about meters at this point. Meters are not installed. This is simply reverting back to um, changing the, uh, the multifamily or the units, the, the apartment units, to a one EU per unit because each one has a kitchen and a bathroom and all that. And so that shows you, um, so that old cost is basically the, the new cost from the one before, right? Which had the EU calculated per bedroom. Mm -hmm. And the new cost is the EU calculated with the one for the individual units. Yes. And then the last column is the, the combination of both. So this is incorporating the additional cost of the EUs plus reverting the, the EU calculation or the amount of EUs back to the, each apartment being the one. Hmm. So I just need to clarify that for a minute. So you're saying that uh, moving commercial apartment units away from being based on bedrooms and just being assigned one EU. A one EU per unit. One EU per okay. unit. Yeah, because we had talked about they each have bathrooms and they the same pictures as a house living really, as a okay. whole. Yeah. So, um, so those are the raw numbers. If you go to the bottom of the spreadsheet, the very, very last page, probably on yours, it shows um, let me see where I'm at. The, for the percent increase. And um, that's based off. That if you can see that there's a 9%, 10%, 6 and 7%. You guys have that? No. No. Okay. 
the down side of the big break, so I was kind of worried that you didn't have that. All right. So the addition of meters, that first line that, that we talked about, the, uh, after you run the number, so dividing the, the, you know, what the new rate is uh, and the old rate, the increase that the meters are going to cause. Um, the, the first line item, the, um, what is it, 1% for 20 years, is that the first one I can't see? Mm -hmm. yes. Is a 9% increase. Mm -hmm. So the addition of meters is a 9% increase in the rate. Uh, the next one is 10%, the next is 6%, and then that, the last one is a 7% increase. That's what the meter will cost you. From that's the, the increase from the new cost? New calculation. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. Because we're all kind of talking new and not old. Right. You're just leaving the old on the for comparison. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Do you have those percentages for the addition of the meters with the, the second addition of the meters? Um, the meters. Let me see. Okay. I don't know if I ran that. That's what we do. Um, so, now that's just the meter cost. That doesn't give anything. Yeah, I don't have that one. Let me, I can probably run it pretty quick. I mean, presumably they'd be relatively close because you're just offsetting. Which one? Your, 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 your final numbers are still equal to each other, right? Which two are we talking about? If if you do the EU by apartment unit versus what it is currently, <coughs> you're you're fine because that increase on the apartment unit is offset by a decrease on um, on your your. Your per EU. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 so it should be relatively the same, if not exactly the same. Yeah. So if you okay. go with the EUs as uh, one EU per apartment unit, like we talked about kind of reverting back to, um, that puts your total EUs that we divide this all into mm -hmm. um, at Eight. yes. 839. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, 839 Nine. 11. And currently, we have 524. Okay. The way we're doing it now. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, the way we propose to do it, we're looking at 803, I think. 803.83. Mm -hmm. So you pick up EUs, which makes your per EU. It goes from 7524 down to 7207 per EU. Right. I do it now. So, that's just more data to play with. And this can go all sorts of directions, it really, you know. But I think to, um, to really look at the, the cost of the meters, we would have to, to look at basically changing how we structure our, our fees. And how would that look? How much would we actually, what would that base rate be constructed from? And go from there. Yeah. And it's going to be hard to track just because it's, it's based on consumption, so you're going to have this. These fluctuations. <coughs> Base fees have to include your data collection. That's part of what we need to talk about. It's the thing we have to determine what is that, yeah, what is that base fee, what is included in that? Right now we talk about it being just our fixed costs, but I don't know if that's necessarily, if that's enough. Somehow you've got to clock your data. I don't know how, there's several different ways. Right. That's a base fee. Whether they use one gallon of water or 100,000 gallons. That job has to be done. Right. So we're talking about a 10% increase to add meters, not including data collection. Just to put the meter in the house. So it's, it's going to be over, well over a 10% right. increase. Yeah. Yeah, because the, um, the reader, the software yeah. the reader, you're probably talking, last time I bought it was six, seven grand. So you're probably talking 10 grand plus the manpower reader. Well, and, and the meters have. There's three different types of meters that you buy. The heads on the meters, there's some that have a, a, like a, a radio frequency that you can go buy and you can 
hopefully from the road you hit this little button on your reader and it picks up that, that number. And those battery packs are roughly $300 a piece that send out that unit, that, that radio frequency. You've got the telemetry system with the radar or with the, the stuff on the poles. That's super expensive, mm -hmm. super. But it's instantaneous. So there's no manpower to fault. You walk out to a centralized location, hit it, and, um, and then you have the touch pads where you actually have to walk up and there's a little unit that's wired to your building and you touch it and it gives you the read. That's the most labor intensive thing. And we have 300 and something accounts. Would probably take two days on a good day. Two days probably to read all those. And that's just the reading, not the processing that data, right. creating the bill right. from the consumption. Verifying the bills, because right. once you read them, you know, there could be errors. It could read wrong. So there's a, a large part of that is, is it going through the reports to make sure you're not getting these, these anomalies in the readings and we're billing somebody for something ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And then you send them back out. Say, then you have to send them back out. And so you go back out, we had 600, mm -hmm. and we yeah. had run. Yeah. And that's the way we did it. And you have a list and you say, oh, you know, you missed one or where something's wrong, you gotta go back out. Yeah. yeah. So there's there's a lot of other just besides just putting them in your past. I mean, I think it's definitely important that we <clears throat> that we look at the meter option pretty closely, just because we've had a lot of opposition mm -hmm. um, to the way things are now, and meters tend to be the uh, louder voice. But mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and and you know, just looking at the way this is calculated here, it doesn't exactly give me what the. I have a good feeling it's going to be an increase, but it doesn't really paint the picture right, you know? Yeah, it so if we could, you know, figure that out, maybe just on what a base system, you know, the cheapest meter system would be, and then, you know, any upgrades would be obviously on top of that, but just so that we can get it out there to show people that. And then you know, we have, well, we're going to need to have a discussion on what the base rate is going to be. Right. Because that's a big part of this. And we want to make sure that our base rate will cover a lot of, you know, the majority of our expenses because people decide we're not going to use water, we're losing revenue. We yeah, also have to discuss, yeah, how much you're giving them. You're gonna, what is the base right. rate might buy 100 right. gallons a day or you know, how it's going to work. Because an EU is basically, so we have four metered accounts in town, so they get credit for their EU consumption. So because an EU is 210 gallons a day, if they have 10, right, they're getting 2,100 gallons a day of credit on their bill. So when their meter reader comes in, we credit them how much ever that is. So we'd have to talk about that too. Are we going to add a thousand gallons a month or whatever it is into that base rate right. for these really low users? Right. So then you're credit, you're, when you credit it back, you're still making your fixed cost. Yes. Yeah. Right. Oh, it's, yeah, it's definitely not easy. Mm. Yeah, there'd have to be a, a 100, 200 gallon limit that uh, if they didn't use it, that's just too bad. Oh, yeah. You, well, that would be your base rate. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So if you don't get to it, then it is what it is. Well, typically, it's somewhere, I always see it somewhere between 1,000 and 2,000 gallons. Mm -hmm. And those are, so you're recouping some of the costs there, even when they're not using that much. And it, 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 it helps out the people that are really users. Because right. there's a ton of different ways to build it. I mean, we can do tiered. There's a lot of different things. But typically, the really low users are just going to pay the base rate, and they're not going to use one. That actually helps the town. So it's kind of just a trade off to help them out, too. The low users are the ones that actually the town makes money, I think, because you're allotting them. So you're allotting them 2,000 gallons and only using 500 gallons. You're still getting paid for that 2,000 gallons in your base rate. And the majority of it you'll find, the majority of our 600 were, were low. Were minimum use users. Yeah. Yeah. And the high users, you know, if we have really high users, then we can talk about um, a tiered approach where they get to a certain threshold and the rate per thousand gallons goes up, kind of thing. But that's all the kind of stuff that we should figure out before we can really have, I think, debatable numbers that we can talk to somebody and be able to mm -hmm. talk to them, yeah. you know, the more the real numbers. Kind of understanding what we're talking about. I mean, the more, more we look at the, you know, the system based on the bedrooms, I don't, you know, like, get a lesser feeling about it each time we look at this thing. You know, it just seems like, you know, the, the question that keeps popping in my head when we go to that type of system is the, you know, the, the elderly person that has a three or four bedroom home that they're living by themselves, you know? Because um, obviously, you know, here, anything larger than a two bedroom house would go up. Um, 
but um, you know, so it just seems like we're putting a lot larger burden on those potential fixed income um, people. Yeah. Kind of looking at that, but at this point, however, you know, if someone wants to buy a five bedroom home, then that comes with the responsibilities of having a five bedroom home too. Huh? You know, regardless of what your income is, but I mean, that's why I don't have a seven, seven bedroom house because I can't afford it. So, <laughs> but, so, but yeah, I, I, it's good discussion to keep having. Mm -hmm. Did a good job with this, Greg. And mm -hmm. however, we can, you know, I think we definitely need to, you know, go through the whole water meter option and exhaust that. And, we got to put some time into it just to see where we're actually at. Well, I think budget time is a good time to do it. We're going to be looking at the water on the sewer. So it's a good time to really delve into it. Maybe direct, you know, after we get through the budget, delve into it and start to maybe come to a consensus on, on what, you know, how we're going to establish those, that base rate. Mm -hmm. that to me is the key to the whole right. thing, is that base rate. So maybe we talk about that after the, the budget. Maybe we come back and start talking about that after you guys have yeah, just really, try to come up with a right. with a starting place. Where are we going to start? Let's you know, let's not go that way. Let's go this way. This seems like the the path of least resistance, or the thing that might be working the best. And what do we need to do to go down that path? I think it'd be helpful to have some data on data collection, different ways. Sure. How much? Uh -huh. What kind of money we talking about? Sure. Uh -huh. Yeah, I can definitely get the you know the installation cost, the hardware cost, and the software for. And then we can just kind of extrapolate, I guess, from there how much time it's going to take. Um, yeah. You've done it in the past. I've done it. Yeah. Uh, Any J press comment will tell you. We'll yeah. start with every system. So along with your meters, <coughs> we'll tell you what your costs are. And then we got to stock the shell of the parts. we got to have you know, those batteries. If we go with the batteries, they have a 10-year life cycle. And they get over 300 bucks a piece. So you've got to start, we got to start adding in our, our capital expenses that we're going to have to plan for in the future. It's just there's a lot involved, I think, after you guys have really dissected the water budget, it might be a good time to start thinking about, you know, what we Software have. updates and technical yeah. support and all that. You've got handheld units, you've got kind of trumble units. That's what we used. It was a big trumble unit, GIS type unit thing, and it wasn't cheap at all. I don't know what you guys have used, but. Something like that. Yeah. Um, and then Same thing. And then the time to do it. You know, yeah. the man maybe even finding from other towns what that cost looks like and then sure. to sure. But then, if we go to the meter system, that's not to go before bond to go to the whole town. So that yeah, be a problem too. It would basically be part of the you know, my intent is to go before the voters, the town, um, and ask for a sum of money um, that we would borrow from the um, state revolving fund, most likely. And that may or may not include meters. It depends on where our conversation is. At this point, it does not. Right. The water you're master plan. Repairs. Huh? repairs and things based on our master Yes, plan. the water master plan is what's going to dictate how much right. and how often. But, and, and the meters are not in that at They're not a piece of that at all. Right. So that would be a separate piece, but it would be, could be um, funded through the same source. It doesn't have to be, but it, it would logically <coughs> Unless we plan for it and do it 20 years down the road. So, you calculate these rates, if you put that whole meter cost into the um, users? Yeah. Yeah, so that's the, that's the paint, it's adding the paint. So, these, this 20 year, 1% or whatever is Teresa gave me an amortization schedule and I just added the payment to the budget and then ran the rest of the numbers like we normally do. So, to, to establish our, our annual rate, we basically take the entire budget, divide it by the e amount of EUs that we have, and divide it by four. I understand that, but and the, the water meters, is that going to be considered infrastructure, or is that going to be considered user equipment? That would be infrastructure, because those water that, meters... Are, that 400,000 would not be all in this formula, because you're going to spread out over the whole town. No. No, this is so user. user. This is based off of users. Yes. Not an infrastructure. Well, I think that. The, no, the EUs are based off of users. Mm -hmm. So everything goes back to the EU. Okay. And that's just the water users. Yes. Now, now you're, I think I know where you're going. 
It depends on how we structure this this vote. But if this payment or the all this infrastructure that we have to put in from the state revolving fund alone, if we decide and try to get all of the townspeople to pay for that, then I think there is a there is a cost reduction here. But that's not the way it's we really contemplate. It. Again, it's it's basically more about the users. Yep. Is this factoring in at all? I, th I think it was Teresa that sort of brought the, the idea up of um, just metering downtown businesses or businesses. I don't know if it was just downtown. Is, but this is not no, that's part not. of this discussion. Is that still something being tossed around or on the table at all? Everything kind of way, everything's over. We're just waiting sure. for all the Janelli until you know what your big right. nine, what your number is. So I think Greg's just kind of waiting. I don't it's think there's anything off the table. I think it's just until right. you know. What you're going to bond for really is going to let you have some idea what you can basically what you can afford. Right. Yeah. I mean that. No, we haven't. That hasn't come to this at all. Right. This is based off of a you know the status quo how we're doing it, the number you know the, the users, and that all just carries forward. Mm -hmm. And there's no change in in any of the 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 building at all. Mm -hmm. That all is just assumed to be the same. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because it doesn't make sense. So no, no, that was not. Yeah, I was just curious. Yeah. That's a whole other whole thing going on for sure. Right. Well, and the, the big one, the big reason it's on my mind is that you know people keep bringing up Bethel Mills as the example of they're probably a larger water user than we're charging them for and then they're paying for it. And you know, is there a way to account for that or hold them accountable for that and help offset some of this? Well, you know. Mm -hmm. And that might be the best sure. way to go about it, but you can't necessarily single them out and say, you're going to get a meter and no one else and we don't know the real consumption. Right. You know, it could be way up there, which is, woo, we get all this revenue, right. but it could be nothing. And then, you know, we're making these assumptions that they're using all this water, and in reality, they're not. Right. Um, but it's a way to then sort of appease those people who come sure. meeting after meeting and say, sure. well, this is da 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 you know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it's something we could definitely look at, putting meters on. on no, why is that result of this? If you can't, if depending mm -hmm. what they say, so, if you can't afford to do the whole town, then let's do all the uh, all the commercial properties, including apartments, and you know, right. and leave the residents alone, but do all the commercial. Properties. It, it just really depends on the number. But then we have to then we'll have to establish yeah. a base rate for exactly. those. So it just depends I mean, on the commercial what, rate versus mm -hmm. the residents. Yeah. It depends on what yeah. you end up with, how much. Or we could do it like we do other metered accounts, which is essentially the same thing. I mean, we're, we assess the need to mm -hmm. It's not, it's, it's, that's a possibility. I don't know how much really implication that would have to hear because it's a variable number, because it's consumption. So it'd be really hard to track that without any data. Um, but we could, I could kind of throw that in there, because but it's, it's been really based on the same method. So like our, our metered accounts now are being charged based on the same method as everybody else. It's so much for your EUs. And then we add the consumption on top. Gotcha, yeah. So that would be the same way that Bethel Mills would be. It would be whatever their EU2, they would get plus. plus whatever their consumption is. And that number is such a variable, it's hard to really know what that is without having to add. But the thought, and that'd be the same with all commercial properties. We just really wouldn't know until we Exactly. Did. It really just depends on what your master plan or your final number looks like what you know you may be yeah. terrified to see that's it <laughs> well i mean you know i mean you currently know how many eus you have in commercial properties right so you know that you have x amount of commercial properties and that you have a yield of this many eus and if each eu right now is whatever 115 dollars or whatever you know what what you're charging so-called fixed well what do you fix but right. If you did 80% of that number, that would be your so-called what should be fixed. Your base rate. And then you add the equipment, and, you know, then you add all your meter to that. Should give you a pretty close. Well, that way we get away, not get away, but the way we kind of, I guess, feel that we're doing it um, equitably is we're, we're not giving them a reduced rate. We're charging them for the, the full rate, but we're giving them credit for the EU, the consumption credit for the EU. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of in, in six of one, I think. Yeah. yeah. In a way. Sort of. 
don't know. You're backing it with a number. It can go all over the place. It really can. <laughs> Because again, we start talking meters, we start talking just the variables. Right. They're, they're. Yep. Any uh, further discussion in regards to water? Oh my god, no. <laughs> Come on. Are you sure? Come on. Let's talk about it. Yeah, well, yeah. Nice it's a full house tonight. Right. This is your chance. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right, we will uh, table that for the next time. So let me just make sure what do you need from me on this? What are we looking at now? We want to put together the cost of. Um, different reading types of data collection. Yeah. Data collection. Yeah. Okay. And if it's possible to get a comparison, maybe maybe not necessarily a town the same size as ours, but a comparison of what they would take in if it's 600 people and we're 300, you know, divide that in half. Just sure. to call it an, some, some, some sort of equivalent, but to know what their manpower into it and data processing. Okay, data yeah. collection costs. Okay. All right. We have some select board meeting minutes. We have um, the last two, I believe the... Is that second one? 15th, I believe, we had... Uh, the the yeah. What's that? You had sign. <laughs> right, but we had... I'm trying to remember now. We have several amendments to them. So the 15th, the 15th, we had some amendments to it that now need to be signed. Yes, this is the revised. Right. There was a couple little changes to it, and I think they're both actually revised. I think you had some revisions, or there were some revisions to them. Uh, we have any any issues with the 29th? I didn't see anything looking for us, but. Well, Amos is not, his name was, I'm trying to find it. She has him as Evan Post with a question mark, and it's Amos Post. Where are you at? Um, on the 29th, the second page, the top, uh, the top oh, yeah, of yeah. integrity, energy. What's his name? Amos, A M O S. Okay. I think that was. Is the right last name right? Yeah, the last name is correct. Okay. Um, I want to say there was one other thing. Yeah, the, on, on page three, there's a letter from Bethel Listers. Yeah, that has been cleaned up. Okay. So I've made that change already. We've eliminated that. Okay. Do we skip uh, this item and all that stuff? Okay. That was so it, all it was was really informational, so we just put the name of the, the person on there and that was it. Okay. So if there's nothing else, you guys can approve that as, as a, and then we will uh, sign it. No, you can't sign it, yeah. But you can sign it first. So you just to make one motion to approve October 15th and the 29th as amended? Yeah, we can. Yes. Okay. Is that I thought it was going to move. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I thought we had the 15th. Town manager's report. Yeah, I uh, didn't talk about it last night, but budget started, as you can see. So we'll be working with the department heads and, and try to put the uh, mm. a budget. Um, the skate park, so um, we had the, the meeting last week with the DRB. They approved the um, site plan. So I'm moving forward with the land and water conservation um, fund or grant. It's kind of involved, it's a little bit of a pain, but um, that has to be out by December 17th, I believe. So I'm um, finishing that up, and that will go to the um, right board for review, and then we'll submit that to the state. So you said they approved the site plan, but not they didn't go through all the specifications of square footage and setbacks and all the that kind of stuff? site plan is meant to just be a... Just an overall... A picture. Of what we're sort of proposing. The specifics are not, it's not meant to be, by any means, meant to be um, scaled, even though it is somewhat, it's not. Just because of the 10 sports that day doesn't mean that's what it will actually be. 
it'll be with that after your mind, yeah. So yeah. the skate park is still, the, the people on the right board are still under the impression that the skate park is limited to 5,000 square feet, which I think is what the board had said, give me something that's no bigger than 5,000 square feet, and we'll take a look at it. So of course, they're gonna maximize that number. But, um, when they get closer to that, that kind of design, they'll bring that back to the board for, for review. All right, I, I, I was talking with Carol, catch him there and he was concerned about how close it was. Yeah, he was at the there, there are calls about setbacks and yeah. parking spots and yeah. all that kind he of stuff. He was at the meeting and the setback for the tip for the, the skate park is 15 feet so we, they moved it back to maintain that 15 foot setback. So he was okay with that. No. But he was there. Yeah, yeah. So okay. There were a couple revisions to it based off of some of the comments that were made. Mm -hmm. um, but they went ahead and you know, it. So I'll be reaching out to the architect that designed the first one, did the, the CAD on the first one, and they'll be putting together another um, map, a uh, map plan in terms of the cash I have by, by the way. So, uh, so yeah, the, uh, the grain on the way in, hopefully we'll be going in at the end of December uh, for the skate park. Um, the water master plan? The water master plan. So the state took their sweet time, and now I know. They had all sorts of issues with this back. All, and and they're, they're looking out for us, which is great. But they came back with about seven pages full of comments that they had on the master plan. So um, I, they sat down with our engineer and explained to them what they wanted and what they saw. And our engineer is now going line item by line item and, and addressing and changing each one of those items. So I don't see this thing being done for another two, three months. Which is, you know, it is what it is. So once they need it for us, so that we can go to the voters. And I get once the comments are addressed, does it have to go back to the state for reapproval? Yeah, but it should be pretty quick. It really should be really fast. So it may be first of the year. I don't know. It just really depends on how quickly our engineer can get seven pages of comments addressed and, and um, suitable for the, the state. Did Did you read through the comments? That they oh yeah, had? I mean we're good stuff. I think stuff. I mean, where, where are we looking, I mean, as a town right now? We... There were no numbers. It was solely items and assumptions that were made and things that were data that really wasn't collected correctly or maybe should have been collected and wasn't, stuff like that. It was more the, the, the methodology of, of all the, the technical information that was in. It wasn't necessarily the numbers at all. I don't know where the numbers are at. I haven't seen that part. Um, well, actually, I do have a draft one that I can bring to you if you want to look at it. That would give you the numbers, but they're not they're not proven. No, I, w I wasn't necessarily just thinking the numbers. It was more of a you know, was the state on kind of the same wavelength that us and the engineer were? I mean, was there? I think so. I was think it a lot of just you know small technical comments, or was it? You know what well, we think you should do this no none of that none of that, none of that. it was we the the uh, not the assumption that's right but the the comments that were made and the uh, the recommendations that were made need to be validated a little more and this is how we like to do it kind of stuff so, so no no big saying, surprises no no uh, there's no like the state's not saying oh your system's going to die tomorrow fix it right. none of that kind of stuff it was really more just Hey, Mr. Engineer, you need to show me and prove to me how you're coming to that, you know, to that understanding, right? You're coming okay. to that, or how you, that, what approach you used, type of stuff. So really more technical type things. Stuff that's in the best interest of the town, for sure. Okay. Uh, there were a couple of things that the, the, that the engineer didn't put in that the state would like to see as far as potential projects in the future. Stuff that we didn't really think were, were large projects, but they want to see it in that. Little things. Um, but nothing that's going to be a substantial change from what we all thought. Okay. So I hope I hope that you know from January would be great. And another thing is probably going to be early March. And the bad thing is we need to have a number in mind when we go to the voters mm -hmm. as to what we're going to be asking for through that loan. And we may not. Really know may have to do happens. a mid-year vote. Yeah. Special or, or best time. May have to. Oh, may yeah, have to do like a exactly. two. We're just coming with what we think we need because it's not going to be. The draft numbers, the numbers that are in the draft report are not, not going to change substantially. They're going to be generally what they need to be. 
and there's some, there's some big numbers there. Um, what the report, what I'm really waiting on from the report is that how they're prioritizing those projects and how they think we need to be putting them together. And that would tell us how much we need to ask for. You know, if they say that, yeah, there's three projects that need to be done in the next five years, then maybe we need to ask for all of them. If they say, well, there's one now and one in four or five years, and maybe another one in five years, then maybe we look at that and the, you know, how we ask them to vote. So that's really what we And the bridge 33. Yeah. Do you think maybe now is the time to, to invite the uh, engineering firm in to meet with the select board of select people? Hot seat. I can. Yeah. Sure. I'll, I mean, that's yeah. kind of what I'm thinking at this point is mm -hmm. to, sure. to, to, to ask the tough questions here and what, you know, basically at this point, what they're going to do for us. Right. And, mm -hmm. um, uh, I can make that phone call. Yep. So in doing that, if you could just put together for for us for um, for the next um, meeting, maybe kind of what the yeah okay. what the estimate was. Yeah, I know. I know. You, you gave us some of that stuff, but you know maybe just some formal boom boom. You know this sure. was I got all the estimate. Cost this was the design flaw that cost us. You know that whole yep. thing. Yep, I can do that. Not So I'm not sure if I missed something, Greg, but at one point you were working on a harassment policy back in June mm -hmm. or July. I think we was the last time we spoke about it. Well, you harassed me too much, and I that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll bring it. Back. You just got me. Okay. Honestly. Okay. Uh, if okay. you guys are, I'll bring it. Back. No, I just. I was quite a ways for like I think it just kind of got thrown back. You said we were going to talk about SNS later? SNS, yes. Uh, so I pulled their uh, conditional use permit, and there are no conditions in the permit that limit how many cars they can have. So the angle is to try to limit the cars that they have with our, um, our service water or what's it called? Our uh, well head. Yeah, well head protection. Yeah. So that may mean they just have to move the cars, but it, what it does say in the minutes from the, the meeting for their um, permit was that they stated that they thought that they'd have like eight to 10 cars and if things were going well, they could have up to 15 or something like that. So there is that statement from them. So I don't know if we can pursue that angle, but there is, but as far as the permit, they are meeting all the conditions of the because there was no condition that said you had to be limited on how many cars you can have. Mm -hmm. Does that permit expire at some point, or is it a, a uh, audit for I don't imagine our, I don't. Does it come up for renewal? I don't know how this was worded. I have to look at that. Usually, uh, yeah. I think the condition use permits are. Are they doing service work there? Yes. It says in their permit that they can do, they would do a small amount of service work in the back. And they have to keep all their parts and pieces and all that in the back for you. Yeah, but still that's right on top of the well that it is mm -hmm. in the floodplain. Yeah. So but I, well it was on structures and things like that. So as far as the floodplain, they're worried about you know floating debris and all that. They got a permit. They got a conditional use permit. So they are legally authorized to be there. So they can change oil and just whatever leakage and well, not in that well head protection rate. So right, but that's that's, that's the angle I have to look at. So as far as the permit itself, I don't know that we have any legal recourse on that. Other than they have a statement saying that they thought they didn't know 
it might be up to 20 cars. Well, that's what Rick thought when I talked with him. He said he didn't, they never had a specific number, but there was never more than 12 or 14 or something like that that ever, ever came up in the discussion. But from a zoning and legal perspective, I would be, it would be tough to say, hey, this is what you said, but there's no condition that says you can't. Right. That's the hard part. If they put a condition that says you can't have more than 10 cars, then that's the state. You know, they're... But with the new uh, zoning regs, are they grandfathered in? Oh, yeah. They have permits yeah, they have a condition use permit based off the old regs. Yeah. They have a condition use permit. That's the whole issue. They have it, and the conditions are what the conditions are. Now, the well protection is a whole other thing that I have to really get into. Yes, because it, it moves. The problem with that is it actually more, it goes more towards the high school or the school than it does towards them. I mean, they're in it, of course, but I'll have to see. Well, they're parked around that. What is that? <coughs> that is an election that's a whole issue. That's, that's Tim. What is that? Um, uh, I think there's a lift station there. And, uh, and some of there's a pit there with some of his sewer stuff. Yeah. That's a whole other issue we've been fighting them about. They're parking in front of it. Yeah. But again, that's not a condition of a permit. They're not a violation of a permit. Hmm. They're a violation of being able, maybe, but not a violation of a permit. So the, the well health protection area is really what I think. And right. see if there's anything there that, and that may be just as simple as they may have to just move the cars. I don't know. It just depends on how that language, what it says, and what those limitations are. Because there's a, an immediate area right around the building, and it kind of, <coughs> as you expand out, of course, the, the limitations become less and less and less. What are our rights in that area? We have no. We we're, don't. we're essentially leasing the land yeah. from the owner to put our own land. But we do have a well protection area, which is, is something that we could, you know, that we had every right. I just didn't know if there was, you know, if we could corridor off a, you know, whatever, you know, 10 foot buffer zone or something. You know, I mean, I didn't know if we had any recourse to put a buffer zone. The well protection does that. So it's a circular thing and it, and it expands out and it actually morphs a little bit. But mm -hmm. in the immediate area, it's kind of a circle. So it's a you know, diameter or whatever it is from here all the way around. That's, that has a certain set of limitations, and then as that expands out, they, they change and lessen. I just need to figure out what portion of that, if, if all of it, then we have something to talk about. Okay. Um, if not, maybe that they just have to do some operations somewhere else. But I do remember the permit saying that they were going to be doing some minor mechanical type stuff in the back, and that they would have all their parts and stuff out the back. Mechanical is different than, than servicing vehicles, you know, changing the Yeah, I well, they're, yeah, they're, their own vehicles that they move in and out of there, they're servicing. And uh, I, know, I know folks that have bought vehicles there that they haven't serviced there. So it's but the number is the actual number itself. I don't have any legal authority there. Without the permit being contested, which it sounds like nobody contested it, they'll just give them free reign. But you raise a good question. I'm not sure how long they're about. I mean, my gut says they're about as long as the business is there, but I'm not sure. You know, maybe, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think they have to come back there. I really don't. No, I don't maybe it's it's Once it's established, it's established. Well, yeah. 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 your zoning regulations yeah. would say something like if they shut it down for a year, or so many, sometimes right. if you shut it, then, sure. then they might, then it might. Or change the ownership, change the use, of yeah. course. Yeah, change, but, zoning, but I think you're Once right. it's established in there, they've they got the permit. Because most right. of the time, the only way you get in your permits that you might say something like so many truck trips a day out of a quarry or, you know, so many cars, that has to be, that's done at the time of the permitting based upon probably a, you know, a adjacent property owner complaining about yeah. noise yeah, or whatever. Yeah. You know, and now that they have it, even if they said we were going to have more than 15, they could probably have 100 there now. Yeah, there were not many conditions in the permit and that, and it just wasn't one. Yeah. So. Point sets are better enforcement. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll check that uh, the other thing and just see if there's anything we can do there. So I see something. Uh, do you have anything else? Uh, you do? Anything else for me? So we have a uh, constable report. Um, I don't know if there was anything on there that Paul wanted to talk about, but. Yeah. You got an email thing? Huh? The on route to JP? Well, yeah, I just, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I talked to him about this. Uh, I think I, I, I sent you an email and asked you, is this something in, is this some kind of written contract that we have that specifies 
responsibilities of us and responsibilities of him and who's going to cover what and all those kinds of things. When I was, I don't know, I wasn't involved when he was appointed. I don't know if you guys were no. in, on the board when he was appointed or what the direction was meant to be, but I just think there's a lot of there's some questions, you know, I, that I have. And it, you know, you know the, the vehicle, come, you know, coming over the mountain every every day, or every time he comes over back and forth. You know, should the vehicle stay here? And I, you know, just a lot of different questions about the well, responsibilities. Well, you must have a, a meeting with him and just talk over some of your questions. I, we don't have a contract with him that I could find. I could not find anywhere that we ever had a contract with our constable. He's basically just appointed as a sort of an employee and falls under our, our personnel. Policy. Is there, That's all we really have. Is there a job description? Um, the job description I brought to you yep. last year, yep. and it was basically statutory. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's all we have is, is the state statute mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. um, now, that doesn't mean that you don't have the right to define, you know, what his, what his position really is a little more and what the expectations are. I mean, I can tell him I'm not getting uh, real far with it. I'm still waiting for the spreadsheet that's supposed to show me how he's splitting up, you know, because he claims that mm -hmm. the time was on our, that, so the time was on our time card, mm -hmm. and he used somebody else's car, mm -hmm. and somebody else pays for the class, so he's got a map in his head as to how he's making his equity, but I still haven't seen it. Okay. Um, he reports to you, doesn't he? He does report to me. If he's a town employee. Yes. Got control over him. yes. So, so he wasn't going to training, he was going to a, a conference. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know, I haven't always had the companies that I worked for pay for me to go to conferences. Some of these things, I mean, I don't know these that, kinds of things. Some of these things he's required to get training hours and things to go to. But, right. You know, if your he's point, required think, to get the training, let him go kind of on his own too much and not had enough. Supervision. Mm -hmm. It sounds like I need to rein him in a little bit and just be way more involved in what he's doing. Um, well, I think if you just establish the procedure, you know, right. then there won't be questions. Well, but I got to establish the procedure with us and with the other two counts too. Right. Because they've all got their own thing with them, whatever it is. I think in the other two counts, honestly, he just pretty much does what he needs to do. Mm -hmm. And there is real authority there. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, yeah, I think it's, I mean, I. I getting the impression from the board that this, this is not acceptable. Right? So well, I think there's, you know, there's just a fine line there between, you know, what he needs for time to go get recertified or, or you know, versus what might be a, you know, a, a business day to go. Right. Well, what kind of expense should, he, others, should he be covering as his own, right. you know, for his yeah, own yeah, I would say it's resume? Well. He goes to, I'm not even aware of. Yeah. So he's not even, you know, or, giving me an idea that, that he has to do it. So I, I'm just going to jump into him a little more, and we'll get more involved in what he's actually doing. Or, you know, I don't know if it's possible or not, if he could give us a list ahead of time of these are, these are the events where I want to attend this year or this quarter. Or, and he has a budget, too. You know, so, something. You know, we hold him to his budget just like we do everybody else. Right. But I get it, you know. We've, I've asked the question, you've asked the question to me many times, so enough is enough. I get it. One thing I'd like to see is, a, he's got a couple of speeds here. It says 46 and 25 nurse instead of PA license, and a Vermont license, but he doesn't say whether he gives them tickets or he just lets them go. I'd like to see, if he stops somebody, I want to see right. ticket, yes, ticket. <coughs> sure, I'll tell him that, because that's just another, I think probably another button on his little spreadsheet here, or his software. Uh, you can stop all kinds of people and, and, and if you don't give them a ticket. Right. Sure. And it doesn't say anything like that. Huh? Nope. Check on the vehicles. Okay. Yeah, I'll tell him that. He's got the nurse go, otherwise he wouldn't put a nurse in there. Yeah, I'll have him add this report. Board have anything else? I just want to ask Reese about how many tax sale bonuses do you have in the past? 
I'm sorry. Tax sale notices for many? Oh, well, we sent, I, I can't tell you quant the actual dollar amount, about a quarter of a million to the attorney. They did the first round of letters, which basically gave people, you know, a time frame to either come up with a payment, they call or make an arrangement. And um, we had some payments in full, we had some payment arrangements, and um, I have not yet um, gone back to see the you know, next process is going to be. Said you're up for sale. Yeah, well, the next process is going to be going through the list with Greg and then looking to see how many of those properties that we think we could find buyers for. Um, some of them I know I can, some of them I'm not sure about yet. So um, to me, I, I don't really want to tax them if I can't find a buyer. But um, at, at this point, I have a list of people that are waiting for tax sales that want to buy. So, um, so I think it'll be end of November, beginning of December before I finalize who's going to tax him. Okay. But in the meantime, I'd say that's that's a good thing. It is a good thing. I move we adjourn. Second. All in favor? All right. Aye.